as we always do, a benchmark. Now in Philly sports and all over the country, from coast to coast, as Howard Cosell and everyone would say, and as Jim McKay would say, back in the days of ABC Sports, spanning the globe to give you a constant variety of Big Sills takes. Big Sills! Welcome aboard. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys stepping in. Let's go. Absolutely flexing. We so appreciate it. I mean, you want to hear something crazy? I'm not even sure Xander knows this. You know, this is the time of the year where everyone goes, damn, where's the content? Where, where, where is the content? Where's the content? I'm going to make, and I'm going to show you an example of people surrendering to big seals and to you. You ready? So the National Football League Network, the NFL Network, Total Access went dark this week. Because you know why? Producers didn't have enough content this week. They went dark. I say it's a lack of talent. If you can't come up in an age today where you have 24-7 intel about the National Football League or about anything going on in sports, I don't think you're very talented. The NFL Network's morning show is dark this week because they can't find enough content. And they cover all 32 NFL teams. And I'm just little old Sills, four hours a day, banging away. Sometimes the days are up here. Sometimes the days are down here. But you know what you never get? You never get a different from me when it comes to what we deliver to you every day. Think about that. And I so appreciate, I know, you guys come here each and every single day, and I can't thank you enough. The NFL Network, owned by 32 owners. Okay? You mean to tell me you shut your morning show down because you can't find enough to say? I think that's pathetic. Weak and lack of talent. Lack of talent. But that's everywhere. Absolutely lack of talent. I mean, how in the world do you not have enough content in sports? Say something else. Bring something up. Make something up. I don't care. Give me a break, man. Hey, by the way, this thing is absolutely killing it. And I have to thank each and every single one of you for doing this, okay? March Madness, it's tipped off, man. Let's go, baby. Absolutely, Jacob Sports and our great friends at Underdog Fantasy are looking for 500 people. Let's get it going. These games are already awesome. Our loyal viewers, and you are our loyal viewers and subscribers. We're looking for 500, and we're getting up there. And everyone, I'm so proud of what you guys have done for us. Thank you. 10 bucks. That's it. They match it. 20 bucks. They match it all the way up to 100. It's as simple as that. So already, get this. It's like being a stockbroker going, hey, you want to make 10 bucks? Give me 10 bucks. There you go. You're not out anything. And you get to have some fun during one of the great seasons in sports. That's the NCAA tournament, too. So, again, all the way up to 100 bucks. Now, here's the deal. Okay, you got to remember now, you got to use the promo code WIN, W-I-N. That's W-I-N. And we're partnering up with our great friends at Underdog Fantasy. And good luck to you. We'll keep bringing it up. I got my, hey, dude, I got UConn. You know I'm not going to go against UConn to win the national title. I'm a Connecticut guy. I'm always going to root for Connecticut. 
How you doing, right? Paris Campbell, who's that? Paris Campbell, who's that? Never heard of him. What do you got? 30 catches or something? Where was he? With the what another dime store signed by Howie? Who's that? <laughs> who who did they sign? They signed a nobody. Special teams guy. Sure, okay. That's right, Dave. He's a lift driver. Wide receiver. Hey, thanks, Big Chris. Who? They signed Campbell's suit. Okay. Sills, wrench me. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, Steve? How you doing, baby? Hey, Steve, you give me a ton of shit, but I appreciate you being here, dog. I really do. May I please kind of deviate before we get on to some topics here? This is about Shohei Otani. You hear all the media people? I think you live to be outraged. I mean, I think what the news media has done to you, they're teaching you to be outraged by everything. <gasps> Can you believe Shohei Otani's involved with gambling? Oh, you're that outraged? Are you really that outraged? Here. This is something you'll get from nowhere else. I think it's the greatest thing ever happened to baseball since the PED scandal. This is fabulous. Superstar worldwide star like Messi and Shohei Otani. This guy's enormous all over the world. You got gambling. Illegal bookies, Dodger brand. Man, this is great for baseball. This is the best thing ever happened to baseball. You know why? You're relevant again. You have a story. Congratulations. And it involves your superstar. Do you know how big Babe Ruth was back in the day? Shohei Otani is actually a modern-day Babe Ruth. Broads and booze and betting. That's who the babe was. And you got it here, man. Thank God. This is the best thing ever happened to sports. And especially for a sport that no one gives a shit about until after the first 25 games. You now have a story that competes with the NFL. You now have something. You don't get it, do you? You, you just don't get it. The NFL has a market on this shit. You know the kneeling story? God, that was great for TV. That was so great. Then when it started to affect the advertisers, what happened? The NFL yanked it. You don't see any more kneeling? Nothing to do with it. The, they don't even show you the national anthem anymore. The Better Bing Show with the bad guy, Dan Bone Crusher Cilio. No, 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 Q. I got I to gotta be kind. I promised my aunt I wouldn't use that line. She got a little upset with me on it because she thought it was too political. I got to curb my politics sometimes. You know, between my aunt and my kid, I got to watch myself. <laughs> Free Pete Rose. Oh, my God. This is great. Free Shoeless Joe. Free Shoeless Joe. This is awesome. Can, and, and you know what you have? You have all the do-gooders out there going, this is a real black guy on the sport of baseball. No, it's not. This is awesome for baseball. You got a gambling superstar? Who cares if it's true or not? Nobody cares today in the news media for story, Russia hoax this or what have you. But nobody cares about the truth anymore. They care about the sensationalism of it. Small letters in journalism. Big letters in entertainment. That's what it is, and it's all about. I listen to everyone going, this is just a black guy on the game of baseball. 
Baseball has a black eye on it. You know why? Because no one cares about it. No one cares about it. Now, the greatest player, and I think Shohei Otani is the greatest player I've ever seen. You know why? I've never seen a guy win 15 ball games and hit 50 homers. I've never. In my, this is a modern day Babe Ruth. This is, this is Babe Ruth. But the difference is Babe didn't do it at the same time. They pitched. Then he hit. Oh, tail end of his pitching career, he was hitting. He led the league in home runs. He had 29 in Boston. And he was still pitching. You know, Ruth had the all-time record for scoreless innings in a World Series until Whitey Ford broke it in 61. You, did you know, from like 1919 till 61, Ruth had the record for the most scoreless innings pitched in a World Series. He was on his way to the Hall of Fame as a pitcher. Oh, my God, Bonds. I loved Barry Bonds. Home run and roids. Man! A villain. Every sport needs a villain. That's why the Patriots sold. Every sport loves a villain. If you don't have a villain, you don't really have any content. This Shohei Otani story is awesome. Best thing happened to baseball since these guys were plugging each other's asses with steroids. Absolutely. I miss the steroid era. You had villains versus the good guys. Black hats and white hats. You guys don't get it. Drama sells. That's why we see more reality television shows today. Because it's stupid drama. Housewives of Orange County. <laughs> the New Jersey chicks. Come on, dude. The Osbournes. It's not quality TV on anymore. It's Shohei Otani time. That's the beautiful thing about this. Hey, hey, man. You guys, th this is awesome. Congratulations, baseball. You finally have, you finally have a story that I'm interested in. Holy cow, can you imagine a foreign star like Shohei Otani giving a guy money to place bets for him. That's my take. An interpreter has access. That's like saying that my that's like saying that my personal driver that takes me back and forth from the ballpark has an ATM card with my name on it. <laughs> Why would I do that? Any guy in his right mind. That would be like giving a guy who bags my groceries at the grocery store every day, and I happen to like him. Hey, here's my credit card. Keep it in your wallet when you need. If I need anything, I'll have you go buy it for me. You get something for yourself. <laughs> that couple million dollars missing. Who gives a shit? I'm not keeping tabs on that thing. Really? Hey, I know you got money to burn, dog, but that thing is not legit. He gave him the money to bet for him. You know he did. Oh, what are they going to do with him? They're not going to do anything to him. Are you crazy? This is the biggest thing they've had, like I said, since Babe Ruth. And he's a Dodger. Thank God. Thank God. All right. All of the moves made by the Eagles are positive. We need to increase competition across the board with all these moves. I think they will pick the best available player in the draft. That's our great friend, Prince. And Prince, thank you very much. Prince reminds me that I will not miss any of the um, Super Chats. Thank you very much. All the moves made by the Eagles are positive. He's looking at addressing the position and he's not debating prince 
Tell me if I'm correctly dissecting your take here. You're looking at them addressing the position, not so much whether they're going to be good or not, but they're addressing it. And in your opinion, what they're going to do here in free agency is continue to address positions that are not as deep. And then they're going to go into the draft and do the same thing. So you're not debating whether or not Bryce Huff fits or whether or not Devin White is going to be good. You're just looking at it. They're addressing stuff. So in that context, you're correct. Okay. You see, that's funny. When, when, when James or Xander post something, they'll, they'll, one thing will say one thing like, the further you move Hurts away from being a passer, like I think this was the one James did yesterday, that the further you move, and this is what I said about Jalen, the further you move Hurts away from being an RPO guy and being a passer, the further away you are from a Super Bowl. And a guy, the guy posted, well, which is it, Sill? You don't want dual threat, but which is it? You want him to pass the ball or be a dual threat? I don't want him to be anything except what he is. You missed the whole entire point in the context of what we said yesterday. Personally, I think you get closer to a Super Bowl when Jalen Hurts is Jalen Hurts, the RPO guy. The more you pass the ball, Jalen Hurts will never get back there because he's not a prototypical passer. He's not. Okay? He's not. It's not what he is. And the guy goes, well, what? No. This is not my quarterback. This is your quarterback. This is the guy they're choosing. Okay? I've already looked. I've laid this out numerous times for you. I'm going to start it out with something that I posted on my Twitter page, Dan Cilio Show. And I want to ask this question here. So who's this guy they signed? What's his name? Campbell? Who's the guy they just signed at wide receiver number three? Okay. Who's the guy they signed? What's his name? Paris Campbell? Everyone forgets 22? What's 22 have to do with 2024? Nothing. Nothing. Everyone forgets about 2022. I'm not sure what that even means. Paris Campbell. Who's that? The kid Parker. Okay. You know, you'd like to have seven wide receivers going into a season. What's 20? A, a, a flexing. The only thing they can bring up 22. Okay. Is it's the only time he was really good. Because the other two years, he wasn't. Do you understand that, right, Flexen? They have one year to bring up. And if he doesn't play well this year, you'll have three years of mediocre football in one good year, and he will be officially a one-year wonder. Okay? He'll officially be a one-year wonder. If this guy doesn't play great with all this talent around him, he'll be a one-year wonder. There's no getting around that. The pressure's on Jalen not to be a one-year wonder. We shall find out. By the way, I think Kellen Moore is a nice upgrade. I'm going to get to that here in a minute as well. We signed a quarterback from the Raiders. That's right, Joho. Who are these people? I think it goes down the line of what Prince said. They're just signing anybody's. Well, I have one for you then. Why don't you sign Odell Beckham for wide receiver three? He's down in Miami right now, and I know he is because Dolphin people told me. And he is willing to be the third wideout behind Jalen Waddle and behind Tyree Kill. Prince goes, why? He's better than anything you have right now at wide receiver three. And you get him at a league minimum. He's not getting $15 million from the Dolphins. So wait a minute. Look what Jay says. 
He'd rather have Paris Campbell than Odell Beckham Jr. as your number three at league minimum. It's a Russell Wilson deal. And the kid Parker's not better than Beckham. And he's cheaper. That's a gamble you make. Okay? Someone goes, he's washed. Well, you had 36 combined catches. So you'd rather have Queasy Watkins, some dude named Parker, and some guy named Paris Campbell than a guy that will take the league minimum and is Odell Beckham Jr. as your wide receiver three. If anything, the name recognition alone is a decoy in your huddle. Slagger goes like this. Parker's mid, but he's still better than Quez. Park, I, I don't mind Parker on the team. Parker and, hey, Parker and Odell can split time. Sure. Two pros, and then you draft a guy. Now you have a wide receiver room. The thing is, I didn't realize Odell Beckham would take that role. I thought this was going to come down to money and the role. But he's down now talking to Chris Greer down with the Dolphins. The situ- By the way, I could see him landing in Dallas as the number two guy. Now, do I think he's a number two? Not really. But a number three at league minimum? Chris goes like this, Campbell can fly, but he can't play. He's Jalen Rager. He was a second round pick. Nobody lets a second round pick go who was just drafted a few years ago. He's not very good. I don't think he's very good. And since you don't use wide receiver three, why not put a name there? I mean, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Odell Beckham Jr., Dallas Goddard, and Saquon Barkley and Jalen Hurts in that old line. You don't think you'd have a defensive coordinator staying up night, having nightmares, if you threw that offense out at somebody? And then when you have wide receiver three and you have Paris Campbell, Well, I know they're not going there. (laughs) Not enough footballs to go around? Well, shit, that's going to be the issue right there. See, look at this. Let me say this to you here. Somebody's saying he's washed. Okay. Um, Odell Beckham. 35 catches, 565 yards, and three touchdowns he had in Baltimore. That's more than your entire group of wide receivers at number three had the entire year. And you could get him at a league minimum. So he's matched what you do. And if he can put those numbers up, you upgrade to three hole at a cheaper price with a veteran. You're not thinking correctly. Guys aren't thinking correctly. I'm not asking him to come in. Everyone knows he's not a star anymore. Everyone knows he has a star name and he can still make some plays. And he's cheap. Okay? And he's cheap. That's the point, LJ. I agree. Barkley's the third wideout. Why don't you put a guy over there that someone would have to defend, though? Paris Campbell. I don't have to defend him. I'm not going to let Odell Beckham run down the sideline. And by the way, let me ask you something. How about this one? Okay, let me get this for you. How many people do you think have in their secondary in the NFC right now a defensive back if Beckham, if Odell Beckham was in the three-hole could cover him? On their foot, you don't have one. Gardner Johnson couldn't cover Beckham. 
And I'll tell you something else. Blankenship would get destroyed by him. You don't have anybody to cover him. You make it sound like you could cover him. Let me say this to you one more time. With your defense in the shape that it's in, okay, you couldn't cover him if he was the third wide out. If he's your first wide out, you got him covered and blanketed pretty good. This is about mismatches and matchups and money. Why not? You're signing everyone. Guy, you're signing guys I've never heard of. Okay? You, 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 you sign, you're signing guys we've never heard of. How are you happy with all these signs? Okay, that's right. Actually, I thought he made $16 million. He's nowhere in the market going to get that this year. For 35 catches, he's already told the Dolphins he'll take a league minimum. He told the Jets that he would take $4 million to come in there. The Jets said no way. He knows where he's at. So you know what he did? Let me go where there's Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill and in Miami. With a quarterback that could get me the ball in a creative play calling head coach where I can get some functional numbers and maybe a ring. Parker's making the league minimum. That's right. That's the only thing you're, you, oh my God almighty. I'm trying to make a deal here for a guy and you guys are like, well, he's not Beckham, the 1400 yard. I know this. So does the league know this? So does Beckham know this? So does Beckham. He knows this. Okay? I mean, well, if you're going to take swings, LJ, why not take a swing at Beckham? It'll cost you nothing. You took a swing on Devin White. Why not Beckham? And it's just, since he's since how he likes signing big names, why not Odell Beckham? So why nobody else wants Beckham? That's not the case. Beckham now is looking for a landing spot. Now that he's told teams he'll take a subservient role in an offense, anybody in their right mind would sign him. League minimum, $1.2 million. There's no money up front. And you bring in a guy, like you said, last year signed a $17 million deal. And he is Odell Beckham. LJ's like, you're making this sound like Madden 24. No, I didn't make it sound like Madden 24. Your GM did. And for the record, one more time. Third wide receiver just needs to play that role of three to 500 yards receiving and be good. Well, he had 536 yards and 35 catches. Isn't that what we're saying? Combined, you had that with everyone that played in the three hole for you last year. He did that by himself. How does that not make sense? You're not paying anything. You're not risking anything. And you're adding another component to your team that someone would have to defend. I don't have to defend Devontae Parker or Paris Campbell. I don't I didn't have to defend that position last year. With Beckham in that role, I would. Because he's gonna make a you you're not just gonna let that guy run free. I'll let Parker run free. I'll let Campbell run free. They're not very good players. Okay, you talk like people can't get better. Like who? Have you ever seen at a linebacker that gets released by a team at 26 years old and he goes on and becomes a superstar Ray Lewis player? And that's what you're hoping for with Devin White. Devin White is not getting better. Teams just don't release guys and they get better. By the way, the Eagles, in theory, are releasing Hassan Reddick. 
as soon as they get a deal that they like, they're letting him go. Hassan Reddick said, and I'm I'm paraphrasing, he knew his time was over after the Bucks game. After the Buccaneer playoff game. Okay? TJ Edwards got better and you cut him. Or you didn't even offer him a contract. And plus, he wasn't a, a guy on another team in another organization. He was an Eagle UDFA. You developed him, and once you did, you let him walk out the building because Howie didn't draft him. Poor example. He wasn't on somebody else's team. OBJ would destroy our already fragile locker room. No way. Our cheerleading coach couldn't handle that. That's probably more it, Big Marshall, because if they're afraid to bring Justin Fields in for competition or maybe pretend competition for Jalen Hurts, they probably would be afraid, and that's why they would rather have Paris Cam Paris Campbell is a prime example of the fears that that front office has, just like they did with Justin Fields. Xander, I heard Jody talking this morning. Jody's right. Justin Fields was the better backup, but they didn't want to take the risk of bringing him in to rattle the cages and everyone at the link because that guy might look better in the offense. And all of a sudden, you see screams for this guy to be playing if Hurts doesn't turn it around. And, and for the record, here, here, here's a great example, what that guy just said. So you're suggesting then that Justin Fields can't get better? Which is it? According to your take, then, Justin Fields can't get better. Is that right? Okay. I mean, right? In your opinion, Fields can't get better. Anthony says Fields wasn't taking Hertz's job. Hertz wasn't taking Wentz's job, right, Anthony? Anthony, right? Hertz wasn't taking Hertz wasn't taking Wentz's job. Hertz will turn it around. He's done it. He has never done it. He's never done it at the pro level, turned his career around. That's what 2024 is all about. Okay? That that that's what 24 is. We'll find out. Okay? They're saying if Russell sucks in training camp, Fields will take the starting job. Yeah, they signed Pickett, the lesser player, because they were afraid of that. Okay. Wentz quitting on no, 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 no. Jalen Hurts was never brought here to take Carson Wentz's job. So when you say that Fields wouldn't have taken his job, or if Pickett wouldn't have taken his job. That's not a that's not accurate. The Eagles will pivot. The Eagles will pivot. Absolutely not, Steve. Hertz will never see or get close to a Lombardi trophy ever again. Not the current course they have him on. That's not happening. He's not going to throw that team into the Super Bowl. They're going to run their way into a Super Bowl if they are ever. He will not throw a team into a Super Bowl. That is a prediction that I make, and I stand by it. He will never throw that team into a Super Bowl. Now, he'll dual threat one in, but they're getting away from that. Paris Campbell is better than Queasy Watkins, so I like him. Dude, Vince Papali's better than Queasy Watkins. Okay? Vince Papali's better. Vince Papali's better than Marshmallow Watkins. Come on now. Absolutely. Sills, they said the same thing in 2021 and 22 campaign. Uh, said what? Hey, that dude will never in a million years throw that team into a Super Bowl. He'll dual threat one back, but 
I don't believe they're going to go there. We're signing three to five death wide. Three to five death. Here's who you signed. Devontae Parker, Paris Campbell, and who? Okay. Oh, here's another guy with a 2022. Last year, he had 100 yards. Oh, yeah. And what he was drafted in the second round, and the Colts cut him or cut him loose. He must be really great. Must be spectacular. He was a second rounder. And the Colts let him walk out the building too. Man, he's a great player. Hey, 2022, you guys sound like Jet fans. 69, baby. 69. 69, 73, 2000. Okay, yeah, baby. Look at all these nobodies you're signing. This thing's fabulous. I mean... If he was so good, why did Colts dump his ass? You need all the wide receivers and playmakers you can get for your new toy quarterback, don't you? For Anthony Richardson? They let big star Paris Campbell go. Woo! LJ superstar Paris Campbell. Now that he's an eagle and how he signed him, superstar Paris Campbell. <laughs> Holy shit. Paris Campbell is now being hyped up. Like, this guy's the next coming of A.J. Owens. You guys got to kid me, man. Yeah, right. Let's see. Remember, you didn't like Barkley signing. Now you do. No, I don't like the Barkley signing. I think the money could have been appropriate. I never said I liked the Barkley signing. I'm saying he's an added, like, like the Philly Godfather said. It's like buying two Ferraris. Okay. Congratulations. He's a good player. I don't think he's who you think he is. I'm not going down there again. I never liked the – I'd rather have – how about this? Who would you rather have, Barkley or Xavier McKinney? Let's watch and see how many dumbasses we have in here. Who would you rather have, Xavier McKinney or Odell Beckham Jr.? Or excuse me, Xavier McKinney or Barkley? Who would you rather have? Look at Jay. Barkley. Both. I didn't say both. I'm telling you, who would you rather have? Look at the people who would take Barkley. I didn't know the running back position was a problem. Your safety position is a massive problem. Your defense is a massive problem. You'd rather have Barkley than a high productive safety. Yeah, that Campbell signing is a Sirianni signing. Come on, Sills. They got to hype their cheerleader. Absolutely. Oh, and by the way, Shane Steichen, if he, am I right? He was a Colt. Am I right? He was a Colt, right? So Shane Steichen didn't even like him. Shane Steichen got rid of him, and Nick signed him. Yeah, it's because Nick's decisions, that's according to you guys. Shane Steichen didn't even like him. <laughs> and you signed a guy that the Colts head coach didn't want. Oh, Giants last year? I'm sorry. I can't keep track of all the stiffs in the league. I can't. People, There's actual people in here that think the Barkley sign is a better sign than signing an Xavier McKinney. Um, once again, man, you don't have a very good football team. You have a great offense, but you don't have a very good football team. You don't have a good football team. You just don't. Yo, Sills, who are you most excited in the draft? Heard this is a good O-line draft. Great question, my friend. Um,
there's not a wow guy unless you're in love with receivers. And personally, I think the best guy in the draft is that Brock Bowers kid. Tight end position in today's NFL is a priority. It's a massive position when it comes to moving the sticks. Every good team that wins ball games has a great tight end. The shitty linebackers that are in the league today is one of the reasons why that position has become so dominant. I mean, I really like this kid Bowers. Now, thought he was injured last year. His freshman year, he was unstoppable. But I really like this kid, okay? I really do. I Listen, guys. Yeah, that Campbell signing, the Sirianni signing. Come on, Sills. They, they got to hype their cheerleader up. Yeah, you know, it's Shane Steichen and, um, and, 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 and Nick. And that's probably a Nick sign. Just like that kid he got from the Colts a couple years ago when he was over there at OC. I draft another tight end. Goddard can't stay healthy. Nick, absolutely. Okay? Absolutely, Nick. I completely agree. 1,000%. Absolutely. Look, here. I want to make it very clear here. My friends, nobody believes you've upgraded your defense. Except the national guys who don't cover you. They don't cover you. I do. You're not better against the run. You're not better against the pass. Where are you better? Maybe pass rush? Why? You're getting rid of Reddick. Could care less about wide receiver three. Goddard needs to be used. Martin. Correct. And they couldn't use him last year. Absolutely. Only you think that. Get this, Jay thinks his defense is good when you went one and eight. You think you're good, Jay, and you went one and eight. Where do you see that? As a Cowboy fan, I want the Oregon center. He's a good player too. That kid, I think his name is Parker. Um, I think the Bucs are going to grab him, okay? I think the Bucs grab him. Um, hey, I'll tell you one thing. 304, Cowboys need a DT, man. That kid, Mozzie Smith. Um, there's dudes that are in the Hudson River that the mafia threw in with cement shoes that have better feet than him. <laughs> okay? Seriously, man. There's about four guys, John Gotti, and the Gambino crime family threw into the Hudson that have cement shoes on. And I promise you, have better feet than Mozzie Smith. Okay? I mean, big old Mozzie, man. He can't move them cement shoes. That's his new nickname. Mozzie Cement Shoes. You got it, man. That guy moves like Luca Brazzi. Very slowly. <laughs> Very slowly. Okay? That was a shit sign, dog. Cowboys got a... Hey, they got a lemon. They they went on to the a, a Xander. They went on to the Aston Martin lot and went, well, you know, they, they, they kind of shop like Howie. You know, I like this guy, man. There's something about him. He went to Michigan. By the way, Michigan guys, very few of them have really panned out. And the only guy that really has panned. And by the way, they even hated the goat in, in Ann Arbor. Lloyd Carr hated Brady. Hated him. Wanted to give the job to Drew Henson every chance they could get. Cowboy fans said Mozzie was better than Carter. No, they said he was the next Reggie White. Mozzie sucks. I want the Texas kid, Murphy. He looks pretty good. He looks pretty good, 304. He does. He looks pretty good. He does. Hey, hey, hey. Jordan Davis is better by far than Mozzie. By far. Here, here. You 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 want to get? You 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 want you want this, dude? Jalen Carter, Mozzie Smith. Holy cow. Mozzie Smith will never be in the room with that guy. 
He'll never be in the room with Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis is superior to that kid. He's superior. He's just not what you thought he was going to be. Or he, uh, he's, he's what I thought you would be. He would be a two-down guy. Okay? Sills has made the Eagles the worst run team in football. No, 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 not Sills. Your team was the worst run defense in the last eight weeks of the season. Not me. You were giving up 145 yards a game, Hutch. That's great. Look at Hutch lying. Okay? Hutch is telling you, Cilio made the Eagles the worst run team in the league. Last eight, hey, you guys want to go 10-1? and one? Well, the last eight weeks of the season, you had the worst run defense in pro football. So it is the worst run defense. It is. You're not telling the truth, Hutch. You're not. You're not telling the truth. No. Don't need to put glasses on. Run defense was terrible. Did you not see everybody out rushing you? Hell, you couldn't even run the ball. You were getting out rushed and out rushed on. People were beating you like you had your hands tied behind your back at the line of scrimmage. Both line of scrimmages surrendered. Eagles haven't improved all these moves. That's right. And get this. That's right, Hollywood. That's my point. People are saying because it's the offseason that they have improved their defense. No, they haven't. Seals, how many games did the Cowboys win this season? Hmm. That's a really good point. Let me do something here. Before I do the Cowboys, let me do the Eagles. On how many games I think the Eagles. How about this? I can't, I don't really like to do that. It's kind of insane. Let's do this. How many offenses can that Eagle defense stop that are teams that they're going to play next year? How many teams will be the better unit versus the Eagle defense? Let's take a look at that. Obviously, the division opponents. Washington, you'll split with them. You'll split with Washington. So you're one and one. Cincinnati, your defense can't stop Joe Burrow. That's one and two. Your defense will not stop Joe Burrow. Baltimore with Derrick Henry. <laughs> Holy shit. Hey, Xander, James, you better get clips out for that game because that's going to be what we like to call in certain <laughs> – hey, in certain places in the NFL, that's going to be called a roadmap highlight film. And that's going to be called a road grader. And please, this is what you don't want to be in a game like that. You do not want to be posterized by Derrick Henry, by Lamar Jackson, running the ball at Reed Blanket. <laughs> Can you imagine what Derrick Henry's going to do to Jimmy Dean sausage linebacker Nakobe? My God almighty. Seriously. Seriously, Nakobe Dean might be in traction, and he could be on a gurney. If I were the Eagles and Big Dom, I would have a rescue unit with a helicopter ready when Derek when, when Derek Henry comes rolling in and plays you guys. 
Hey, hey, Xander, you better have a helicopter to get you to the nearest hospital because he's going to run the shit over you. Oh, wait, the great, the great Betty White is going to stop him. Who? Huff. <laughs> that guy might have 400 yards on you. <laughs> shit. Holy shit. You're one in three. That thing won't be close. You'll be blown out. So you're one and three. Dallas, you'll split. You're two and four. New Orleans, you'll win that game. Oh, wait, their defense is pretty good. Uh, I just don't think, I hate Derek Carr. I don't know. He'll throw the bald picks and shit. I, I'm going to, I guess so. They don't really have the same offense. So you're three and four. The Giants, you'll split like you did this year. So you're four and five. Atlanta, you'll lose that game. Kirk Cousins and that offense with Pitts. Who's covering Pitts? Who's covering Pitts? Who, who, who's covering Pitts? There they are right there, 24 schedule of teams to play. You're four and six versus Atlanta. Let's see here. Carolina, you'll win that bitch. Carolina, I don't know. David Tepper, I don't really think they have a lot of offense to really challenge your defense. That's not very good. Cleveland, ah, my God, that'll be a bloodbath too. Holy cow. Good night. See you later. <laughs> David Ajaku, who covers that dude? Who covers David Ajaku? Let me guess. The greatness of Nakobe Dean. Oh my God. You're five and seven. Pittsburgh, you're losing that game too. You're five and eight. You're not stopping that offense. You're not good enough. <laughs> Look at this guy here. Watson blows. I thought Tyrod Taylor did too until he beat you. Or I thought Drew Locke blew too. But he beat you. I thought Zach Wilson sucked, but he beat you. Come on, man. Hey, get this. Like LJ said, every media outlet last year had the Eagles competing for the Super Bowl. And I told you at 10 and 1, they're not very good. And you didn't believe me. Well, they weren't very good. So whatever those guys were telling you a year ago that they were going to contend for a Super Bowl, Big Sills was here to tell you, no, they weren't. No, they weren't. Everyone would come on this program on a daily basis and bash me because I was saying, you're not that good. And you were 10 and one. And I said, you're not that good. Right? A niner all day. Did they not come on here and keep attacking me? Because I said, and I would listen to our post-game show. The only guy on our post-game show that kind of was hedging around was Seth. And then finally, when they went to 10-2, and two, Seth went, this is not a good team. I was there since New England. I was there from New England. I didn't think they were that hot. Okay? I never did. But, Dan, wait a minute. Look at our offense. I'm not talking about your offense here. I'm talking about stopping people. You can't stop people. Okay? And by the way, with all this wonderful offensive talent, you have dick to show for it still. Remember that. You have nothing to show for all this. All the money you spent, you have nothing to show for it. You have just as much as the Cowboys do. By the way, the Niners are in that room too. You spent, that's again, this is the beautiful thing about the Chiefs. They spend no money, nothing but draft choices, draft choices, draft choices, draft choices, draft choices, choices, building foundation, building foundation, staying young staying young and the reason they can do it is clearly
because guess what? No matter how much money you throw at Jalen Hurts, he'll never do what Mahomes does. That's everywhere in the league, and I get that. That's why he's worth that money because it's not just in wins. They don't have to spend the money to win. Think about that. They don't have to spend any money to win except on three dudes. That to spend no money. So you're five and seven with Cleveland. You're five and eight with Pittsburgh. Put that thing back up there, Xander, that opponent's there. Tampa, you're six and eight. They kicked the shit out of you in the playoffs. Mike Evans? <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I'm going to give you the Rams because I don't think the Rams are going to be as good as they are without Aaron Donald. Okay? And I think the Rams are a good team and well coached. Seven and eight. Green Bay, crushed. You're seven and nine. Jacksonville, crushed. You're seven and ten. And why? Because you can't stop people. You can't stop people. But still's our offense. I get it. I get it. Better not have any turnovers like he did a year ago. And I think he will. Seven and ten. Yahoo! <laughs> right there in the middle where everyone likes the NFL, in the land of mediocrity, or as they say, parody. Yes, sir. Seven and ten. Because you haven't upgraded your defense. But we're better. No, you're not. How many wins will the Cowboys get now? Sills is acting like a jackass. Why? Because you can't stop people? Do something about it, dude. Stop shopping at the dollar store. Try walking into Neiman Marcus and getting a player. Why don't you spend some money on a player and not a name? And go find a guy and win ball games. Why can't you sign a frontline guy? Because they don't want to. Howie's got $40 million in cap space. And guess what? He didn't do anything with it. He didn't do anything with it. He signed Beckham or um, uh, Barkley. Yeah, a, a, a guy you didn't need. And Orenthal Burks. <laughs> Hey, look, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the list together of all these nobodies. I mean, you guys are like signing people that have been, and they come to Philly, and all of a sudden, they're automatically Hugh Douglas. Or these guys are Brian Dawkins. <laughs> this just doesn't get any better. Okay? Where was Huff? Okay, here, here's this. Huff is replacing Reddick. So did you upgrade? Do you think that's an upgrade on Reddick? How many people think Bryce Huff is an upgrade once you move off of Reddick? I don't. How many people believe that's an upgrade? Watch this one, guys. How many people believe one-year wonder Bryce Huff is an upgrade. No, no, no. How many people believe that he's an upgrade to Reddick? They are moving off. This guy's done this one year in his career. The other guy's done it four years in a row on three different teams. Seals, at the beginning of the season, you said that the Chiefs wouldn't win. I, I did. But they did. Hey, you might be right, but you still got to play the games. Hey, Prince, I couldn't believe two things. With You're right, Prince. I did say that. I didn't think that they'd get back to the AFC title game. I'm not even sure I said they'd get into the playoffs because 
they lose they lose Eric Bieniemy. They lost everything. I can't believe what that guy that guy's season last year was more impressive than the year before. Because you know why, Prince? He did it with even less. He did it with even less. Dude, his greatness was stamped this last year, Mahomes. His greatness was stamped. Nope, it's a younger, cheaper option. Howie Vision. Big Marshall saying that. That's right. Bryce Huff is not an upgrade. It's not an upgrade. You're moving off a of Reddick. You've got basically a one-year, we'll-see Reddick guy. What if he doesn't live up to that? When you had the guy, you didn't have to worry about that. Seals keeps cooking. These moves don't move the needle. I'm sick of this fan base saying, but we got Isaiah Rogers. Hey, 1.4 tells you otherwise. Hey, Pooh, I think the kid might be something though. Pooh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dismiss that. I I I think he's I think there's something there to this kid. Okay, I think there's something there. I, I do. I think there's something there to him. Oh, and here's this one. Hollywood goes, Barkley will get hurt and Jalen will be number one running back again. No, Kenny Gain will be. Because they're not going to run him. Can you imagine this? If Barkley goes down for any significant period of time and he has a, basically, am I right when I say this? Barkley's had like a Dallas Goddard kind of career. Sometimes he's in, sometimes he's not in. Misses games. Is it, isn't that right? I mean, he's constantly banged up. Last year, he, he kind of quit on his team. And I don't blame him. They quit on him. So I'm not really shitting on that. I'm not. Hey, by the way, our friend Tony Casillas, who works with the Dallas Cowboys, He's going to join us. Also, we're going to talk to him a little bit about the upcoming NFL draft. Number two overall pick, former All-Pro. He's going to join us. Winner of two Super Bowls, maybe three, with the Cowboys. Was the number two overall selection by the Atlanta Falcons and works in the broadcast area in Dallas with the Dallas Cowboys. What are the Cowboys doing? And like you guys said, Sills, what do you think the Cowboys do? When it comes to wins, they don't have a running game. They don't have a hammer. They don't have a number two. Um, and you can run on them. I don't know. I, I, I can't see more than six wins, seven wins there either. I, I just don't see it. I think in the last three years, they've gotten worse personnel-wise. But they got worse personnel-wise on offense. I mean, Zeke gone, Amari gone, um, Tyron Smith gone. I just don't see it. I mean, Dak was great last year. So you're going to rely more on Dak to carry the team? I think Dak needs more help. I really do. All right. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. Don't forget also, folks, March Madness, our great friends with Underdog Fantasy. Make sure, please, during the NCAA tournament, Sign up. Jacob Sports and Underdog Fantasy are teaming up with 500 of our great followers and our subscribers and viewers. Look, the minimum is 10 bucks. They match it. 20 bucks. They match it. 30 bucks. All the way up to 100. They match it. Simple as that. It's a great time. It's a second bet when it comes to sporting bet in the country next to the Super Bowl. No other event is bet on more. Then the NCAA tournament, a lot of fun people do it. They're in a lot of pools. Remember, when you're working with Underdog Fantasy and with Jacob Sports, the code word is W-I-N. That's W-I-N. Tony Casillas will join us. Once again, that'll be at the bottom of the hour. We will talk to the Dallas Cowboy, what's going on in Dallas. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. 
Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech, we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Mike Little was a union construction worker who was badly, badly injured when he suffered a horrific fall because of someone's negligence. His life would change forever. It was just a real downward spiral of everything. Everything you do, and you're sitting home by yourself all day. Have no, you know, you can't go out because you can't drive, you can't walk well. It was just a horrible situation. Call Brian Fritz at the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm at 215-548-2222. E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles. I so love the phony outrage on Shohei Otani. Can you believe it? <laughs> what, somebody gambled? Gave his buddy four million bucks to put bets down? So what? It's like busting a guy's chops over smoking weed. Who gives a shit? But it's gambling. <laughs> really? There's far worse things in this country going on than a guy placing a bet on a football game. Why don't you worry more about shit that matters? Homeless, the hunger, people hungry. I mean, honestly, a guy making a bet, who gives a shit? It's the integrity of the sport. People want to know what they're watching. Dan, really? So, like, you don't know the outcome of wrestling matches. You Wait, are you under the impression that WWE isn't rigged and scripted, and yet it has some of the highest ratings on the planet? Those summer slams, you're trying to tell me that you're not entertained by the WWE, then why are the numbers off the charts? Why? Your phony outrage is absurd. And listen, Cody, I don't subscribe to that. Hey, that's right, Brian. Hey, like I tell you all the time, hey, Brian, guess what? Many people went to the Titanic and made the Titanic movie one of the most watched movies in motion picture history. Did you not know the boat went down? You kind of knew the story, right? Well, you went anyway. This phony outrage. Shohei Otani. Holy cow. Hey, you know what, man? 
it, it, no, I'll leave that alone. Because in different ways, I'm surprised people haven't gone down a different road. Okay, well, we're going to get to something here in a minute here. I just, I, I, just, I just love the phony outrage that people get nowadays when you're talking about athletes today doing things that society's now comfortable with when it comes to gambling, smoking weed, that kind of stuff. Each and every individual has a right to make their own way. Okay? Sills, when's your second mock draft? Um, it will be probably coming up next week and then we'll do one right draft week before the draft. So we'll do it there in that week. That's the one we'll do. We'll probably do it. I know Cody, people like to be outraged. Oh my God. Did you hear what that guy said? No, I didn't. I don't care. Has no bearing on my life. Zero. I so don't care. Okay? Hey, man, I like people talking about a guy from 2000. Boy, I'll tell you one thing about Xander and uh, Big Bill and everyone else. All the people over at IP, I love it. You know what? They like posting about 2022. Well, hey. Uh, Paris Jackson, Michael Jackson's kid, or Paris Campbell, Paris Campbell. Um, this guy has 626 yards and, and, and you know, what year was that? 22, oh, two years ago. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> well he was good two years ago. <laughs> so was I. It was a little better too. I could, you know, move a little better. Big Seal's not quite as limber as I used to be, obviously. Two years ago, though, I was a little more limber. You know, now, <laughs> okay, he was, Jalen was really good three years. Pretty soon we'll be doing this. Hey, Jalen was really good five years ago. <laughs> and we'll still be posting 2022 shit. And James, I'm kidding. I love you, man. You know that. Do a super job for us. Same with Xander. But no, no, I'm making a point though. Pretty soon we'll be doing this about, and everyone will be talking about Jalen. You remember when Jalen was good nine years ago? This guy was great in 22. He finished with a runner-up. Let me get my teeth back in. He was great 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, man. Let me ask you something about Kellen Moore. You think Kellen Moore was a really big priority for the Eagles? Or do you think they hired him because he really didn't have another option? What do you think? The more I dive into this, do you, do, do you think he had multiple teams that he could have signed with? as an offensive coordinator, or do you think that was the only job that was offered to him? Eddie goes, they wanted a yes, man. How many people believe that? That he was probably plan B. All you do is run your mouth about the Eagles, but always FKN wrong clown. Okay. So Rob, do you think Kellen Moore had more opportunities to be hired? Okay. Do you? Why can't anyone answer it? Because you can't and you don't want to. Because you know better. Because here, let me ask you this. I feel like he, Q says this, listen, I may not agree with everything you say or what the Niners and Cowboys fans say, but I am pro-free speech and would defend your right to say it. Q, you know, a lot of people, including some of my family members, think that I'm aligned with someone. I'm aligned with free speech. 
And that means for everyone, no matter who you are, no matter what you believe, seven and 10, huh, Sills? Points per game, do you think the Eagles will average this season? Will our sustained drives help our defense? Could be, Steve. Didn't last year. It ran them off the field. Ran them off the field. Okay, here's here's my problem with Kellen Moore higher. So Kellen Moore gets fired in Dallas, goes to Los Angeles, and Brandon Staley, who was kind of on a one-year prove-it deal himself, he goes there to a coach who he knew was on the hot seat. And that could get fired. But the Spanoses didn't want to hire him because they went and got Harbaugh. And once they got Harbaugh, they fired him. Okay. So he knew Staley, when he went there, was on a one-year prove-it deal. Well, the heat that Sirianni just took this last year He's in the same situation. Why would an offensive coordinator come into a situation where his job is going to be on the line for one year again if it wasn't his only option? Or is he coming in knowing that Nick will be fired and that there's a better chance of him turning Hurts around? Because if he turns Hurts around, Nick's fired anyway. Nick will be out. If, if, if Kellen Moore gets that guy to the Super Bowl, they're going to fire Sirianni. They're not going to let Kellen Moore go. They interviewed him two years ago for the job. So Kellen Moore is going around looking for jobs that he knows the coaches are in trouble. And you think that relationship between him and Nick will be healthy if it gets out to a bumpy start. How would you think that? You hired a guy you interviewed for the job, and you hired a guy knowing that the head coach's job is on the line this year, and he's your offensive coordinator, which means he has your fate in his hands. And you think that's a healthy environment. Now, I think they positioned it to Nick that way. Take it or leave it. And Nick said, okay. That shows you right there how unhealthy that coaching dynamic between Kellen Moore and Nick Sirianni is. Nobody in their right mind would come to a different conclusion that everything is kumbaya. Okay? How in the world? Okay, Chris goes... Why in the world would he not want to run the best offense in the NFC? You're not the best offense in the NFC. That was the San Francisco 49ers last year. After they took out a bitch board and took it out in front of all the Eagle fans at Lincoln Financial and pulled the pants down of the Eagle players and spanked them for 60 minutes. That was in San Francisco. Wrong. You were abused by the Niners. Abused. Okay. We are today after signing Barkley because, as according to Steve, Barkley's better than McCaffrey. Ah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Right. That's why McCaffrey makes $18 million. (laughs) He's the highest paid running back in the league. And finished second in the MVP voting. I'm pretty sure that Barkley's never, he's never played with talent. No, no, no. McCaffrey got that contract when he was in Carolina. Don't forget that. The Niners didn't give him that deal. He earned that deal in Carolina. He earned that deal in Carolina. 
with the Carolina Panthers, who have been worse than the Giants. Worse. Our friend, former pro bowler, works with the Cowboys. Tony Casillas will be with us at the bottom of the hour. I'm asking you again about this certain dynamic that we have here with your coach and Kellen Moore. You interviewed him for Nick's job three years ago. He goes to a place where Brandon Staley was on the hot seat. Now he comes here with a guy on the hot seat. There's a chance he could be fired three years in a row. Get this. If Kellen Moore gets fired three years in a row, there's a chance he could get fired three years in a row. And he's great. Where are you guys getting this from? Great coordinators don't get canned like that in consecutive jobs. Joshua goes like this. What were Christian McCaffrey's stats from Carolina? Uh, $20 million a year? That's the only stat you need to know. $20 million a year. <laughs> I mean... Who gives a shit? He got $20 million. Dude, you really think you think Saquon Barkley is better than Christian McCaffrey? Same people that think Hurts is better than Josh Allen. Uh, it, there's no debating this now, and I'm not going to. Because that's just, you know, we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> Seriously, man. You, you, you might want to sit the rest of the show out, guy. Dan, the 49ers spanked the Eagles for three quarters. They got bored by the fourth. That's right. I forgot. That's right. They pulled their starters out and put their backups in. I forgot that. That's right. They put the backups in fourth quarter. And they started putting Sam Darnold in. Hey, when you see Sam Darnold in, you know you're kicking the shit out of people. Wow. And they did that in your own barn. Terrible. Way to get beat up by the Niners. Well, we're just as good as the Niners. Okay. Chris goes, we're literally watching Sills on the Eagles with Bucks apparel. Hey, Dick Stick, I played there and was drafted there, 56th overall. As you notice behind me, they're only teams I played with and my uncle's jersey and my helmet I had with the Bucks. That's it. And my daughter's school. Nothing else. Those are the, I, you don't see me, fanboy. I played for the Canes, played for the Bucks, played for Coach Johnson. All that stuff, Maryland up top at the ACC championship, the national championship rings at Miami, and the NFL alumni ring that was given to me by the alumni. Okay? Ain't nothing to do with being a fan. I'm not a fan of the Bucks. You see, one thing will always be, I'm an alum of the Bucks. I'm an alum. Like I'm a Canes alum. I do love the Canes. Okay, put an Eagles hat on or something. You know, I, I don't think, I, look, how about this? Wait a minute. Oh, hey, you know what I forget? To, oh, I forget. Here, will this do? There's um, Jerome's palm from his funeral. And here's a cup I've had for a long time with Jerome's palm in it. Jerome Brown, you know, the eagle guy who was killed in a car accident? That's his palm. Is that good enough? Will that do? Will that do? I was just checking if that's okay. Okay. And, and, and by the way, would you like me to show you his funeral card that me and Reggie had together? We can do that too if you'd like. I could put that up on the wall if you'd want. Because I have that too. 
As a matter of fact, when I take a break, I'll go get that. So that it'll make you guys, the Eagle guys, feel better. Because you see a buck thing. I'll put Jerome's funeral card up. It's cool. Chris says he's never seen it. You know what, Chris? Might be cool to show you. Might be cool to show you. You know what? I will show you that. By the way, I'll show you a picture of it. Before we get Tony Casillas on here. Tony knew Jerome. We all did. Tony played during the same era. And I'll show you it because I have a picture of it. And I, I have it up in my uh, collection in my bedroom because that's kind of something near and dear to me. Jerome, funeral. Let's see if we got a post here. Uh, I'm sure I got some cards here and some photos here of it. It, it was one of the craziest things I've ever been to. Um, Reggie was, I, I've told some of you this before Reggie was there and all that. Yeah. I'll have to get that for you. Cause we, I have, I have that. Let me see if I can just let me one more look here. Jerome funeral card. I got that somewhere. Damn. Love the guy, man. Well, I'll, I'll get that guy. I'll get that to you guys. Okay. Yeah. Damn. I should show that to you. I think you guys would, would appreciate it. Well, if you were there, Seth has one. Seth has one too. So anyway, all good. I'm going to work on getting Tony Casillas here in a second. We appreciate everybody coming aboard. I'm going to throw a topic out. By the way, so you do agree Okay, you do agree that this situation between Kellen Moore and Sirianni will could be contentious. Bob Brown says this, Sills, 2023, how he flipped on the side for Patricia. 2024, how he will flip on Nick for more. How he makes moves to show he's doing something, just not the right thing. Interesting. Absolutely true. You know, I was just talking to you guys about um, Jerome Brown and during our time when we were playing in college football, I'm going to say this to you. Here were the top dudes during my time. Um, Jerome, Michael Carter at SMU was also a super football player back in the day. I'm trying to remember. Jerry Ball also was a pretty good ball player. He was also at SMU. Um, and, of course, Tony Casillas. I mean, I, 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 I post something every now and then on my Twitter page. <laughs> after, after I signed my scholarship to go to OU, I was like, oh, you know, they got Casillas there. And I'm like, eh, you know, I might, they got two DTs over in Miami. <laughs> and I can play next to Jerome. They they play a 34 in uh, OU. He goes like, yeah. I go, Casillas is there? Eh, I don't know. He just went out with a trophy. I think I'm going over to UM. Here's Tony Casillas. He joins us now. <laughs> <laughs> there was only one of you, man. I'm like, eh, you know, I'm going to go to a place where they got two of those guys. <laughs> well, I think you upgraded a little bit, Dan. You went to you went to Miami. You got to play alongside the great John Brown and yourself. You're you're a humble guy, but you was a baller in your own right. So, uh, but it's it's a great time. It's always time to reflect and just kind of look back. And you know, now the the kind of the state of college football where it is with NIL and transfer portal. Hell, if you wouldn't have liked it there when I was there, you know, in modern day foot, college football, hell, you could have just left. <laughs> Can but, you uh, imagine, hey, Tony? It's always great to be on here, you my friend. Can you imagine, Tony, those teams with your team, with the Boz on that, my team with Irvin, with NIL, if we had that during our time? Even Dion 
up at FSU was during our time. Can you imagine what college football would have been like? I mean, with all those personalities, and because social media wasn't around, you could those when you showed up in a when OU showed up in a place, like when they came down to the Orange Bowl, you had gone to the Falcons the year previous. Um, when they showed up, eighty six thousand people were down at the Miami Orange Bowl for that game down there. I mean, because they were such events, I think social media kind of takes that away a little bit. But boy, can you imagine if we had that during our time? I, I'd have a pizzeria on every block in Miami. <laughs> well, I, I know this. I probably would have tried to play college football for at least 10 years like some of these guys are now. I mean, why go to the NFL the way it's uh, these guys are getting paid? And, you know, I think in our era it was certainly different. Um, you mentioned Brian Bosworth. I mean, he was creative in his own right, developing this persona. Uh, you know, the University of, of Miami, the, 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 the U, I mean, you, you look at uh, what the personalities you had and you know, my, you know, Michael Irvin and, 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 you know, some of the, the guys that would have been obviously in social media today. I think it's always funny. I asked different guys. I, I believe I had Troy. I was doing my podcast and I asked him, I said, what do you what do you think would be different about modern day football? Uh, and it's specifically talking about the NFL and he goes, well, I'd probably have about 5 million more followers on Instagram, but you know, that equates to money. And, 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 you know, the, the creativity that a lot of guys did, they had their own little swagger. They did their, you know, they didn't really need to, you know, the, things blew up in the media. The mainstream media back then was like a microphone in your face and, you know, like EP wire and everything. But now everything's instant. As soon as you, you, you do a, you know, you, you, post something on social media, your, your podcast goes, goes on, on, uh, out there in the public. So as you mentioned, it's instant, you know, there's no, there's no speculation. Don't you think, don't you, uh, I think that's really another thing that's not that I kind of miss is a speculation because there's not much speculation in today's world, especially in sports. Cause everyone wants to be the first one, whether it's the, the player, whether whoever's posting it, they want to be the first one to get it out there in the, in space. Do you agree, Tone, that here's the one thing that I'm going to go on the other end before we get into the Cowboys here a little bit. Um, don't you agree the one thing that the nil does, and maybe this is just more for the high-end players or the players that are going to be drafted. You know the one thing that I think it gives you an advantage of? Handling money. You know, when you get into the NFL, Tony, and you sign a signing bonus, you were the number two player taken, and, you know, all of a sudden – you know, you're 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 selling your books back to have money to go to a student union <laughs> or you're doing something for you to make some money. And before you know it, you got a couple hundred thousand dollars in your in your checking account. And most guys aren't prepared for that. Don't you think some of this gives some of these kids an ability to maybe work that and make mistakes early before you get the big NFL money? And you're a little more prepared maybe to handle that. Well, I hope so. I hope I hope they're getting education on how to handle money because, as you mentioned, Dan, you know, you're coming from a place obviously growing up and not having a whole lot of money, and then obviously you get a go to the NFL or whatever sport to get a sinus bonus, and and now it's like a lot of there's a lot of different problems that start to exist, and we all know there's people that come out of the, the woodwork and want to be your friend and want got something for you, you know, at least these kids can put everything in perspective. I mean, I, I do think there is some good things about the NIL. I think that you kind of hit on, you know, guys that aren't going to get drafted or not going to, are not going to get high and get a chance to play in NFL. Hey, make the money in college, put some of that money away and, and prepare, and give yourself a head start because, you know, I have a son that's uh, in the workforce now. I graduated and a daughter that graduated last year from college and you know, going out of college and making six figures, it's difficult in the, in the workplace now. As an athlete, you definitely get a head start, but, you know, it, it doesn't last forever. I mean, you know, you you know, everyone knows it's had money and you go through the ups and downs of how the management and people want this and want that. You know, hopefully there is something in place that really gets these guys prepared where you don't have all these scavengers coming out of the woodworks and, you know, and agents and everything else like that. And I hope it's, yeah, that's the thing that, that's kind of scary. And I, I think it's really there's not a lot of answers to this, a lot of the questions is, you know, how's this stuff regulated? Yeah. I mean, is there programs in place? Is there something 
in-house or, you know, do they have their own financial guy, their mom and dad, you know, and, and that's another thing. There's a lot of, it's 17. Uh, it's hard. You're a teenager. I mean, you're 17, 18 years old and going into college and how are you having these problems? And when I was 21, I was young. I didn't, I was young at 21. And now to have to deal with that stuff at 17 and 18 and be able to make the right decisions. I can only hope uh, partner that there is something in place that helps educate these kids. Absolutely. Um, Tony, a guy who was a pro bowler and played um, inside tackle, uh, just your thoughts on Aaron Donald calling it a career and what, mm -hmm. you know, he brought to the table 10 years, um, eight first team, all pros, 10 pro bowls, three time defensive player of the year, over a hundred sacks, two NFC titles, a super bowl championship really compact a lot of stuff inside of a 10 year career. I mean, the guy's a dog. I, you know, it, it's, it's Reggie White, minister of defense. And I think Aaron Donald, I think there's a lot of, a lot of defensive players. And, and you look at Lawrence Taylor, Lawrence Taylor is more of a hybrid, but as far as defensive linemen with their hand on the ground, I mean, Aaron Donald just made it look so effortless. Uh, you, you know, I just remember going in there and watching watching film on Reggie White, and I'm like, you're probably the same thing. You're like, and you yeah. know, and around him, it's like, oh my god, this guy is the hump. He's a freak. Hey, the yeah. hump. How did, did how Barry many? Allen? Hey, hey, Tony. How many times did you try to hump and go? How oh. does he do that? Hell no. I mean, it's it's just you know, there's so many. There's a, there's few guys that can that have that ability, the strength, the quickness, and just make themselves small in a. Uh, in a in, in a very small you know very very small space when it comes to inside and the way he's able to work and just his strength and you know not a big guy in his height but I mean the dude was a monster and I, I'm gonna miss watching him play I mean I, I you know I'm probably like you as a defensive player or anyone I mean there's not too many defensive linemen that can capture your your attention like he did and to see him uh, you know hanging up ten years I mean that's a long career but. I, I think uh, when I, when I think everything is all said and done, it's Reggie White and it's Aaron Donald, and I'm not sure Aaron Donald's not in the same atmosphere as is uh, stratosphere as as Reggie White because Reggie White was an amazing player. So, I mean, it's just a uh, phenomenal the career that guy had, it, just a tremendous tremendous player. Absolutely. Um, you know, I just thought about something because we're based in Philly and I want to get your take <clears throat> on Jalen Hurts. Um, are you surprised, Tony, of his ascent, where he is now and where he was in Norman when he transferred there? Because when he came out, there was always questions on reading defense. He's still progressing as a young player. And I think Riley did a decent job with him there. Plus, he had CD Lamb there. But mm -hmm. are you surprised that Hurts is where he's at right now? Well, I, I think the way he just kind of climbed the ladder pretty quickly, and just he, he seems to me in that, that position that you have to have this football aptitude and be able to make decisions. And it seems like that they put him in a great position to make those plays and. And I don't think it's systematic. I think there was so much a timing on that offense. And I think whatever happened, I mean, I, I'm just like just like the, the Eagles nation and yourself, you cover the Eagles. I know I follow you and, and you got great content about it, but you're just scratching your head and like, what the hell happened yeah. in the last six games or games, whatever games of the season where they just, it, it was a spiral out of control. And then Jalen, you know, I, I think that, you know, and he, I think, hey, hey, Tony, and he imploded with him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm, well, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not leaving him out. I'm just saying that the quarterback it, has to deflect a lot of criticism, and certainly he was the, one of the reasons why they weren't as good. Um, but I will – there was times when guys would drop balls and, you know, guys quitting on routes. And when things aren't going well, then I think that that really kind of shows the – character of your team when yeah everything's great dan you know that when you're you're balling you're winning going to nfc championship and you're getting a big contract everything's fine but as soon as you hit some criticism and some negativity i mean all of a sudden it starts imploding and, and i don't know he just didn't seem comfortable I, I don't think that that he didn't look like obviously the year before and i guess i'm surprised on how you know where he started oklahoma as a number you know as a, a draft in the first round and then how he just went up 
up the ladder. And then all of a sudden he just went down after, you know, from the, the, the previous year playing in the Super Bowl. And I don't know, is it coaching or is it playmaking ability? Is it, is it his ability to, to make decisions? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of different things, but man, that team right there, I mean, as a Cowboys fan and some of the Cowboys nation, I mean, they got their own problems, but to see that happen like that, it's just what the hell's going on. And I don't think anyone could really figure it out. No, I, it, and, and that's the problem that I'm having so far, because I don't really think they've really addressed anything on the defensive side of the football. We'll get to that here in a minute, but you know, I let, before one, one one more thing before I get to the Cowboys, um, and get your thoughts on them. Does it does it ever reflect to you during this time of the year how insane it is, Tony, that you were the number two pick in a draft, a defensive nose guard tackle, that and by the way, spectacular college career and a heck and a really great NFL career. But for you, we are you shocked? Is it luck? Did you know you were going that high? When the phone call came from the Falcons, were you shocked? Surprised? Were you glad? I mean, I'd like to know because not very many defensive tackles slash nose tackles can pick <laughs> number two overall. Yeah, that's nose tackles kind of a dying breed, but you know, still there's some teams that run a three, four, but you know, it's pretty surreal when I look back and, you know, I, I'm transitioning, you know, we were moving and I haven't moved uh, in 27 years. And it's amazing all the pictures and memorabilia and things that you have. And, and you're probably the same way. You know, once played. Tony, I got stuff in my drawer. Oh, I, I, that, I love you know, your what, stuff, get this. I got, I got, I, I got stuff in some my of your drawer. Stuff. And I found this thing here. This is the first Jimmy Johnson letter for the first wow. training camp that he had that Jerry Jones and them owned. When we were going to Thousand Oaks, and I'm like, you know, he's talking about moving, and I'm like, I got things <laughs> everywhere like you do, and we're, I go like this, holy cow! I throw more stuff away than people would want. Yeah, I know. I'm the same way. You know, I, I almost feel like a, a, a memorabilia hoarder. All this right. stuff that you, you know, stuff in your attic that you haven't seen in forever. The point being is like all of a sudden you start looking at some of these things that you've had in your life and are blessed to have, and and uh, I think it's kind of the surreal part of being an athlete is that you really don't know. You, 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 you dream when you're young, um, but you don't understand. There's a certain period of time in your life and you realize some people are like, oh, this isn't for me. Uh, and then there's people like that are lucky enough to have these aspirations to keep on dreaming. They're like, OK, this this is some reality. But. You know, I really didn't, even when I got the, uh, yeah, I really thought that I try to make myself uh, understand how lucky I was and am, you know, having a great family and hum, be stay humble. I think that's the best thing you can do. But, you know, I really didn't think about it. I just thought, well, you know, there's a plan, you know, if the plan is for me to go and play college football, then that's the plan. I'll just keep working. In the NFL, I'll just keep working and, you know, hopefully good things are happening. Make some good decisions, work your ass off and, you know, let's see what happens. And, you know, for me, that's kind of the way I, that's kind of the way I led my life, man. It's like, I work my ass off and I'm like, okay, I'm not the, you know, you, you have to go with what you have and develop what you have and your weaknesses and strengths. And, you know, when I, when I really got the, I got the call and that I was going to be drafted to, you know, the second player to pick draft, I was like, okay, this is for real. Uh, it was pretty surreal, but, um, but it was an accomplishment. And I think, I think that, you know, the, not everyone's going to be a hall of famer, you know, a pro bowler. I mean, if you have a nice career and you're able to, you know, maybe an impact and develop relationships, cause that's what it's about. Right. Yep. You know, along the way and just in, in ball and have, you know, and, 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 and just forge relationships and all that. That's the most important thing. And I, I think that for me, that's what I was able to, to accomplish. You know, as I, as I mentioned, all the stuff that you have in your attic and you're going through all this. Where's the Lombardi it, trophy? Uh, it's in a, it's in a box right now. I have not gotten it out <laughs> hey, yet. Hey, Dave Remington, I asked him where his two Lombardis are and his Outland trophies. And he goes, I think they're in a garage somewhere. And I'm going well, like, man. Well, mine's not in the garage. I'm, they're in a box right now because I because oh, okay. I, uh, I haven't unpacked them. But the point being is that I guess that's kind of a metaphor or just not a metaphor, but that's kind of like, okay, well, 
it happened a lifetime ago, but it's still part of your DNA and what you were able to accomplish. And, you know, I, I don't think that you live in the past, but it's kind of nice to reflect and yeah. look and have those memories of playing, you know, teammates or guys like yourself. I mean, cause that's what it's about, right? At the end of the day, you can't take all that stuff away. You can't take those relationships away that you have with your, your guys in the locker room. And Tony, you know, I, I think this give... stuff reminds us of yeah. the best times outside of our families mm -hmm. that we had with a different type of family. And I think that's what that stuff and why it's so hard to get rid of that stuff or we accumulate so much of it is because there's so many memories where, like you said, just something of a road trip, a, a practice, <laughs> being next to Ed Jones, Ed Jones looking over at me going, I want to do that thing that Cilio does. And I went, I looked over <laughs> at Butch Davis and went, what did he say? Butch goes, I heard it too. And I'm going like, okay, yeah. Uh, what I mean, were you right? doing, Dan? Yeah, right? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to say this about the current Cowboys. Mozzie Smith's got to pick it up, man. And I mean, pick them feet up. Let's go. We got we to move them feet a little more here. I thought he got a little behind there. And right now, if I were to say the problem with the Cowboys are two point, they're not very physical at the, at the point of attack when it comes to stopping the run. And I don't think they're very physical at the point of attack of running the ball. And if you don't have that against the 49ers or maybe even against the Eagles, I don't think you're getting out of the NFC. And they really haven't addressed anything so far, Tony. How do you look at it? I don't know. I, 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 you know, before I was, I was going to come on here with you, I was thinking about the state of the Cowboys, and that's kind of the million-dollar question. I don't think anyone can figure it out. But it's almost like are they, are they going to transition into rebuilding? Because I saw, you know, they lost four of their defensive linemen, which were, you know, Nevin Gallimore, Jonathan Hankins, Thorne Starmstrong. Uh, Dante Fowler, all four of those guys are gone. And, you know, what are you going to do to replace the depth? I mean, you know, those guys are nice players, but they're going somewhere else to play. You know, a couple of them are going to join Dan Quinn and Washington. And and now the, the Mozzie Smith, I don't know what it is about Michigan, but, you know, talk with Charlton, they didn't work out for him. And now Mozzie Smith, where there was so much hype and expectation this guy was going to be the guy to come in and really play the physical, you know, had this statue as a player, was going to be a hell of a run stopper. And, oh, by the way, could get a good push in the pocket and the pass rush, but kind of vaporized. Yeah. And I, I asked I asked guys in the organization, I said, well, what's up with Mozzie? He goes, he's just not ready yet. And I'm like, he's not ready. I mean, he's, you know, he's a, a, he's a first round draft pick. I mean, this guy's got to make an impact. And, and I don't know. I think that that's the question. You know, they weren't physical at linebacker. I mean, that was really what got them, you know, in, in the playoffs is that, you know, Green Bay just just kept – I mean, they, they were they were too predictable. And they just picked and picked. And, you know, physically at the defensive line, those guys didn't – I mean, they didn't get, get anything done. And, and so I think that that's – to me, it's a question. Are they ready to – are they rebuilding? I mean, because it sure seems to me – I think the Cowboys' best chance is pass them by. I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I, I don't. And when you look at their their capability, I mean, they, I think they were more capable capable last year than they have been in a long time, and they didn't get it done. And now they're dismantled. A lot of these players are gone. So, you know, Mozzie Smith is just a it's a head scratcher because I really thought, like yourself, this guy was going to come come in and just be a, be a difference maker. And we haven't really seen a whole lot uh, this far. Do you believe Dak Prescott will deliver a Super Bowl for the Dallas Cowboys? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I, I, I you know, yeah, the, you do, the, Tony. I mean, I, 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 I don't think that he's got the. I think now with the way the the salary of these guys are being paid, it's just a norm. A guys, you know, some guy that's a uh, going to sign a three year deal is going to make forty million a year, twenty, you know, thirty million a dollar, and so. That's expected. You know, you look at Kirk Cousins has won one playoff game. It's made over four million, four hundred million dollars. But when it comes to the Cowboys, I just his decision making, you know, Dan, you know this. You've seen a lot, lot uh, enough football in your life and you understand the game. In, a, in that small moment where you got to make a decision and pull the trigger, there's no hesitation. It's gone. You make decision and. 
And if even if this quarterback, and I didn't obviously didn't play quarterback, we've been around the game and watched it. If you have a hesitation, that's a difference. And I think that that's the problem with Dak. He hesitates. He looks for the easy, you know, the easy uh, completion. Uh, he progressive, but he wants he wants to go to the the most uh, I I guess uh, you know less stress situation. And and when if that's not if that's not there, then he makes a decision. And so it's the impulsive decision is not the right decision to make. And you know I think for me that's the that's the problem with Dak. Is it all Dak's fault? Um, I mean, I, I would say 80% of it, but I think also 20, a lot of it has to do with coaching too. I think in that last game when they, they got their, you know, got blown out at home by green Bay, I'm thinking, what is, what is this? I mean, you know, here's the thing about the, the Cowboys is that it's like anything in life. You, if you inherited something, you know, you better earn it. Because if you don't earn it, you're not going to inherit it, if that makes sense. And once these guys inherit it, I mean, you got to go out and earn what people did before you, you know, the star or whatever that represents. And I think sometimes these guys don't understand that because of the brand and everything that goes along. And it's very, they're very polarized. And, and I'll tell you what, you know, you know this, that people are going to get ready to play the Cowboys, man. They may, they may lose the, 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 you know, four straight after the, after the game, if they end up upsetting or beating the Cowboys, but they're going to be ready. And that's the problem with him, you know. It just seems to me that Dak, there's this lull that comes with big games and big moments. And for some reason, just can't make that right, impulsive decision. Two last questions for you. And you know, Tony, I think it – tell me if you think I'm off base with this here. You played for Jimmy. I played for Jimmy. I don't think that they fear Jerry Jones like they feared Jimmy. And what I mean by that is that had nothing to do with the logo. It had nothing to do with the brand. You, if you play poorly, and I'm going to make them laugh here, folks. If you played poorly against Washington, you didn't get fed on the airplane coming back. <laughs> if you didn't play well against Washington, there is no dinner. And I think that since he's left that building, that that has been the one dynamic that, hey, it's okay that I'm a superstar cowboy, but you don't play like a champion. Yeah. You know, here's the thing also is I think maybe it's difficult because, you know, I, I don't know the the command that uh, the head coach has, but there's got to be a way in which, you know, Jimmy was the best at this. He knew what the bottom line was going to be, but he knew what he was – was doing. He had a plan, right? Yes. And you know, that story about not getting fed on the way home from the trip, that's a true story. Man, I I lived it, you lived it, everyone that played for Jimmy Johnson knows it. And that is not that is no fabrication. What's that was hey, 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 we're gonna have we're gonna have dinner. No, we're not. No, no, they're not. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> hey, okay, but what? So Phil Swanstead said, Jimmy, they, you know, they once said that. They lost the game. They need to eat because now they didn't. They need to learn, <laughs> and that's what he did. But he, here's the thing, also, Dan. It's like, is there a, the most the brilliant minds as coaching is how do you how do you make these guys feel insecure about their jobs? Because right. I don't think there's a lot of guys that really are because there's so much money that and maybe at the Cowboys organization is how do you make them insecure that they're going to lose their job? Now maybe these maybe there is, but it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm not getting any indication that there there is any fear of losing your your job and having to go out on the street the next the next week. Um, Jimmy made you fear you losing your job because that was real. I mean, obviously it's a different era, but there's got to be a way in which you motivate these guys, which it means something. Where the head coach is just not trying to, you know, coach out a contract because he needs a contract. I mean, and, and the dynamic is definitely different in Dallas. It's unlike any other place in the NFL. And that's the problem with this organization. If, if you're going to criticize, it starts with the, the management because because Jerry, since Jimmy left, is the one that's making the decisions. And that's who players are answering to, and they're not answering to the coach. And to me, I want to answer to my coach because, you know, it's all about 
pleasing him and making him feel in and 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 really the accountability and 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 really the success is is made and and the credit is to your coaches and the players and that dynamic i want to get credit to him i i think that that's that's how we should be taught you know you, you learn you know you learn that as a when you start in sports it's like the coach you know have respect for the coach respect the coach respects you and as you get on the the nfl level it's like i don't want to let anybody down and i don't think there's any of that certainly it seems like with the cowboys organization and and quite frankly maybe the nfl maybe it's accountability with the with the players you know there's got to be a voice in in the locker room there's got to be accountability if you're you know, I know when we played, when I played in Dallas, Troy was the guy. I mean, he was the, you know, the stoic in a good way leader. It's like you knew that, hey, I better be ready to play because not only did I get an answer to Jimmy, I can answer my my franchise quarterback because who that that's the guy I want to go out there and play for. Finally, I'm going to ask, may I ask you a tough question? Sure. Who'd you enjoy playing for more, Switzer or Jimmy? That's a great question. Um, I, you know what, I, 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 I think they both shaped me the way I am now. I will say this, that the Jimmy Johnson saved my football life and I owe him a lot for that. Uh, because when I was in Atlanta, I mean, I was in the brinks of just saying, I'm done with this. Um, and I was able to, you know, I encourage those guys to come and save me and, and, and trade for me. And they did, but, the same thing with Coach Switzer. I mean, there was a time in my life, a freshman in college, I think everyone goes through it. You're ready to quit. And, Absolutely. You know, I was ready to go go back home. And, you know, I don't know what I would have done if, if Coach Switzer wouldn't have brought me back to campus and said, hey, I want you to come here and help me win national championships. So, you know, it's a great question. I was very fortunate to have those two guys. I mean, I, I you know, when you talk about – By the about, way, I love both of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, think about it. You know, you've met Coach Switzer. I mean, you know, he's a great, he's a him. man's man. Absolutely. I mean, he he is a unique person. Both of them are. Uh, but I, I think that Coach Switzer uh, is 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 like my second father. He has a lot of, uh, you know, ki- a lot of uh, players like myself will, will say the same thing. Thousands of them. And, um, but man, both Here, I'll make guys, it easy man. on you. Why don't we just say Larry Lacewell's our favorite? And I th- we'll end it there. <laughs> Maybe you're. He was always like the, he was the mediator between the two, so oh, he was man. always the guy in the middle, right? Yeah, and you know, and, and here's the thing: I'm just so glad that the whole deal with oh yes, you, know, you talk about Jimmy and Jerry, all that you know, drama and speculation. Why you know he didn't get a ring? I'm glad that's over. But you know, I, I think both of those guys, and you know this, Dan, with Jimmy. Uh, Coach Johnson, and certainly with with Coach Switzer, is that I could call him up, and you know he'd be Anytime. there. And uh, you want to hear something crazy, Tony? Yeah, absolutely. I, t- I was texting the other night with Coach Switzer. Yeah, it must have been nine o'clock um, his time, and we're going back and forth. And he's like, "I'm eight, or ninety or eighty something years old right now, man. <laughs> I'm having a great time in my life." And then we're he's he. You know, he was such a fire plug, man. And I remember walking in because, really, I mean, they had given me – I have my scholarship. I posted it to go to OU, and I'm like, you know, then Jimmy and Butch and Dave and those guys were like – my folks wanted me to stay on the East Coast. We had some sick family members. And Coach Switzer yeah. goes, look, family is always more important. Don't worry about it. Good luck to you. And when I played against him, he would always make – it a it a it a deal to come across and go. I should never have done it, kid. I should never have done it. And I was, and we 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 have we became really good friends. And coach Coach Johnson goes, man. I go, oh no. If I wasn't gonna play for any, I was gonna play for him because I would. I was not gonna play for anybody else other than uh, Jimmy Johnson or Coach Switzer. Yeah, I know. And then Coach Switzer. I mean, think about that. He's such an unselfish, uh, you know, guy that I, I think that. You know, back then, especially recruiting, I mean, he was – Coach Johnson obviously was a, a tremendous recruiter, but Coach Switzer was a was the guy. I mean, it, it, he could sell ice to an Eskimo. I don't know if I should say that. I mean, in this culture. But my point being is this this guy was a tremendous recruiter. And being oh, yeah. able to tell you that, be honest with you, and say, hey, kid, you know, I get it. You know, just take it easy on us when we play you, okay? Um, 
But show I mean, up in a big fur coat and you're sitting there going, oh, who is that guy? On the sideline, you know, with the hat, smoking a cigarette. Yeah. And yeah, he just had style, man. Charisma. I love him. Very charismatic, both those guys. Absolutely. Tony, it is always great to catch up with you, my friend. Good luck on the move. Hey, by the way, worst thing on the planet I've ever done is move. I, I Training camp, <laughs> mini camp, uh, three days. I'll take those things over a move. <laughs> Any day. Man, I'll tell you what, I'd move, I'd move like uh, several times before I'd want to go to training camp. So, hey, man, I'll stick to moving, buddy. But, hey, I appreciate it. It's always great to catch up with you, man. Uh, you do an amazing job. I love your opinions. I love it because you're, you're real, man. And that's in this world. Uh, and you're, you're valid, man, to points, man. And so uh, love you, brother. I love you too, Tony. I mean, you know, the respect that I have for you and it is immense. And you know that for your accomplishments and who you are, what you've become as a dad too, and a family man. I mean, you're very balanced and it's uh, somebody to look up to. And I always have. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Be careful. You, you got down. it. That is our good friend, Tony Casillas. Make sure you hit the like button. Hit that like button. We appreciate him coming aboard. But also, don't forget, we got, hey, we haven't got to all our topics yet. All right. March Madness. It's here. It's going on right now. I'm actually watching Carolina and Wagner. And if you want to make it even more interesting for yourself, Jacob Sports is looking for a select 500 folks of our loyal viewers and subscribers. Please do me a favor. Underdog Fantasy and Jacob are teaming up. You only thing you have to do is when you sign up, 10 bucks. Then they match it, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. They match it, 20 bucks all the way up to 100. Very simple, okay? It's one of the best events of the year. Next to the Super Bowl, the most bet-on event, and really maybe even funner than the Super Bowl. So you have to remember also there's a promo code, WIN, W-I-N, that's W-I-N. We'll reset, put a new topic out, hit it right here on the National Football Show. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Mike Little was a union construction worker who was badly, badly injured when he suffered a horrific fall because of someone's negligence. His life would change forever. It was just a real downward spiral with everything. Everything you do, and you're sitting home by yourself all day. Have no, you know, you can't go out because you can't drive, you can't walk well. It was just a horrible situation. Call Brian Fritz at the Fritz & Bianculli Law Firm at 215-548-2222. E-A-G-L-E-S. 
Eagles. Red Sales National Football Show. Okay. As advertised, I ran up and got it for you guys. Since people say I don't have enough eagle memorabilia behind me, Prince, do you think this will do? I was a pallbearer. Is that good enough Eagle memorabilia for you? And as it said on here, I was a pallbearer for him. So when you guys say the Eagles don't matter to me, That's like saying Jerome Brown doesn't matter to me. If Jerome was still around, he would punch you in the face for um, for um, uh, for the amount of shots you take at his birds. Probably. There'd be a wrestling match. (laughs) Like there were many, LJ. Hey. Okay. Probably so. We had many drunkard wrestling matches, he and I. Yeah. Probably. Leave it to LJ. Yes. LJ, do you know how I lost and I had to go fight the clan? Do you know how I had to fight the clan? He beat me in a wrestling match. He said, I can do it. And I had always beaten him. And he got a reversal on me. And he was with the Eagles and I was with the Bucks. And he got a reversal on me. And he beat me 3-2. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Dad, no. You were out of bounds. You were out. He goes, I, and everyone and all his guys. So I had to go up to Brooksville and fight the Klan with him. <laughs> God, me and him, man. We, we got in. We, how about this? We didn't get in so much trouble. We got in too much trouble. We, we, we got in too much trouble. God. Dude, he's one of my best friends. <laughs> we, and, uh, everyone used to go, you guys get in so much. And Jimmy goes, no, they get in too much trouble. He, uh, Dan, he was your best friend. He's one of them. I had a couple guys back home in Connecticut that I would consider my better friends. But, hey, Denny, here, here, here's Jerome. And my aunt knows the story, Alonzo and them. So they showed up in New York. Jerome was being honored for some team or some shit. Now, I couldn't make it, so I was late. I was home. He knocks on the door at 1030. They got done with their event. Hey, Sills, 
and there's uh, there's um Alonzo Highsmith and Brian, uh, Melvin Bratton, Michael Irvin. They all come walking in the house. Now you got to remember something. Where I live in Connecticut, down in the coast, it's all Italian. Night. Everyone's like, what you know, what's, what's this going on here? Well, you know, what what do we got going on here? What's this? So they get in the house. My grandfather. These guys sat around drinking all my grandfather's beer until two thirty, three o'clock in the morning, eating meatballs. Guy leaves. My grandfather goes. I love this guy. My grandfather was broken hearted when Jerome died. It is broken hearted because of what a great guy he was, man. He's like, these guys are fantastic. I what? You thought they weren't going to be cool because they're because they're black? He's like, no, no, no. And I'm like, well, what else would they want? Because they're canes? It's one or the other. And he goes, these guys love you. And I go, yeah, well, you know, and I still to this day, very close with every one of those guys, all my teammates. I loved every one of them. The greatest education I ever got was going to the University of Miami and understanding what other people were all about. And you know what, LJ, you're right. We wrestled, we fought, and we loved, and we won. That's what made us great. Okay. Okay. That's what made us great. That's what makes every team great. Steve. Oh, my God. Thank you. That was deep sales flashbacks of your own mortality. When you lose someone close, it really makes you take a step back to realize tomorrow is promised to nobody. Steve, when I can't tell you how hard I cried the day he died. And my wife was in tears. She was my girlfriend then. When we were at, she's holding one of these cards. And guess who's on this side? Cortez Kennedy, who is now passed on, and Russell Maryland. And both those men were in tears. And my wife, my girlfriend then, couldn't control herself. And they're putting their arms around her. These all pro NFL guys. Reggie's in front turns around and kisses her and hugs her. Okay. I mean, the whole Eagle team hugging my wife. <laughs> Chris Carter, I think, wasn't on the team because I think Buddy threw him off because of drugs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Terrible, man. And 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 I would I would I would put it out there that yeah, man, I mean, I think about the guy a lot, especially around his birthday. And when I, and can I tell you this? It's one of the reasons that I enjoy talking to you guys because he played for you guys. That makes sense. That's where it comes from. Here, when I say this and show you this. And show you this. This is why I say I love the Eagle fans. And you know I speak the truth. Seals, if you had one last moment with Jerome, what would you say to him? I love you. I love you. Nothing really else to say. You can't say slow down because he's never going to slow down. You can't change him, and I would never try. So you just tell him you love him because you can't change people like that. And I won't lie to you. After his death, my life changed a lot, and I slowed down because I was a crazy human being too. Many of you know. Some of you know. Threw a guy out a window at Maryland. My aunt and my grandmother crying to Bobby Ross. I was a nut. I was a nut. I was a nut. A <laughs> crazy ass nut. Okay? Mean as hell. And I'm different now. And my daughter probably made me different. And the death of Jerome made me different. Okay? Hey, but get this though, Greasy. Always know this. I've been a shit talker a long time. <laughs> I've been a shit talker a long time. 
<laughs> Wish you were still mean. You saw really, man. Jerome would be like this. Enough. <laughs> Jerome was one of the, Jerome. If I could make a comparison to you guys, Jerome was Charles Barkley. Jerome was Charles Barkley of the NFL. That's who his personality was like. Big old soft teddy bear. Kick your ass in a minute and pick you up the next minute and dust your ass off. He's just a really, he's just a spectacular human. And I loved him. And by the way, he didn't really like Reggie's religion that much and how he combined the politics. Because, you know, when you watch that minister of defense, Jerome didn't really think he should be pushing that stuff on people. He thought religion, Jerome was very religious. By the way, have you guys ever been to a Baptist? I'd never been to a black funeral. I don't even know if that's what it's called. Black, Baptist, whatever. I had never been to a funeral in my life where I enjoyed myself in a celebration of life more than I did at my friend's funeral where everyone was singing crazy great. Reggie and the Seth and the Canes and the Eagles and NFL, everyone was singing. I had never been so inspired. I'd never been so inspired. My wife come out of there going, that was a funeral? I thought it was more like a, it, it, it was like a convention. <laughs> it was like a religious convention. It was so great. All right. Barkley's a clown. Eh, you know, Jerome could be one. Do you have Jerome's Eagles um, or Kane's jersey? I have Jerome's Fiesta Bowl jersey. And he has mine, or his, his his son does now, and he has he they have mine. We we exchange jerseys. Um, in Tempe. Hey, Anthony, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I I never seen I never seen it like that. It was really awesome. If I could use that. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I will put that up. As a matter of fact, I promise you, I'll put that up. Because you know what? I want you guys to think good things about him. Heartfelt, Dan. Thank you. You're a good shit. Spoken only like a person in Philly could say. Right there. That right there, my friends. Heartfelt, Dan. Thank you. You're a good shit. Hey. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I don't know why, but I like that. Sills, I met JB in 90 at the uh, Eagles fly for leukemia event at the vet. He didn't want to be there, but he was great. He seemed bigger than life. You know what I had? I had one of my friends. I had one of my friends take a picture. Because today, 20 years ago, you guys dropped the vet. Did you see it on my Twitter page at Dan Celio Show? One of my friends took a picture of the vet when you guys dropped it 20 years ago. Here it is. Look at this. So here's a picture my friend took right after it fell. I got it on my Twitter page at Dan Celio Show. 20 years ago today, they dropped the vet. My friend was right across the street when they took it. Okay. Excuse me. Death Row says, as black people, we do things different. Hey, wait a minute here. Death Row. I think, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Death Row, you and me are paisans. Because I think Italians do everything different, too. As a matter of fact, I think we're very related. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. This is your office, Jacob Chat. I know you. <laughs> hey, I appreciate everybody. Let's get back into this though. But I wanted to, sh I wanted to show you guys this because I thought it was important here. Let's get into a topic here. All right. You know, we're talking about Kellen Moore, and I appreciate you guys. I know we're getting a little issues here with the uh, connection. I don't know what it's been this week too. But then again, hey, Gavin Newsom, help me out a little bit here, will you please? 
Jittos, Manoch, um, Eagle coaching staff, give this a grade. Sirianni, Kellen Moore, Vic Fangio. Is it better than Sirianni, Steichen, and Gannon? Is it better? Both those guys are head football coaches. Whatever you think of Jonathan Gannon, he's the head football coach of the Arizona Cardinals. Do you think the current coaching staff that you have put together now, and there's Chris, better now with a guy who's been fired twice in two jobs. Okay, I don't either. Barb's probably more right. It remains to be seen. Probably more right. What is the advantage that Steichen and Gannon had that more in Fangio don't have. No needs. Hey, what is the advantage that those guys had that the current staff doesn't have? Brian says to be determined. Um, We improved over last year. Well, that's not saying much. Here's what they have. Those guys instituted that philosophy. It was the Shane Steichen offense. And it was the Jonathan Gannon defense. Everyone that has come in is going to run the Jonathan Gannon defense and going to run the Shane Steichen offense. Our coaches are like a three-letter a three letter agency, FCC. <laughs> Fangio over Gannon all day. Um, well, the Dolphins told him it was okay to leave. They didn't think highly of him down there. Did you have a problem with that? And then the head coach himself. Sirianni needs a big, fat Italian-like sales to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. Taking shots at Dom? Can you're taking shots at Dom like that? Holy cow, man. Gannon's defense didn't get 70 points spit on them. Hey, that's a great point. That's a really great point, man. Hey, dude. Yeah, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. No, no. no. Miami put that 70 on Denver. And Vic was down there this last year in Miami. But I get what you're saying. That was his defense, though. And some of those players on that other side, I, I, I get what you're saying. I'll take it shots at Sirianni Sills, not Dom. Okay. <laughs> hey, I was like, damn, Dom and Big Sills getting hammered here a little bit. Right? Let's be honest. Is only there to make sure the Mafia bets hit. Signed Shohei Otani, right? LHD. Hey, Shohei Otani needs a big dom now. He's going to need it there in LA. Holy shit. Shohei at four and a half. Hey, tell me that's not gangster though. Four and a half million missed out of my bank account. Eh, eh, I'm hedging my bets. You don't miss four and a half million. Holy shit. Hey, let me tell you this. Hey, Xander, this guy counts in pennies. <laughs> yeah. Two, six, nine, carry to four. Okay. Three, two, one, move to two. Over here. Coming around here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm betting on Otani, man. Any guy who could just blow through four and a half million bucks can get this. Shohei Otani and Phil Mickelson are boys. 
You know what's always really dawned me on, on like Mickelson? How do you know Phil Mickelson wasn't standing over a putt at Augusta and he just blew one by the cup and he had more money bet on him missing that putt than winning the tournament? Phil Mickelson's worth $400 million. How do you know he's just not sitting there? Hey, get this. Shohei Otani with a bookie. And here's a guy who's a pitcher and a hitter in the same game. You think baseball is wetting their diaper right now? So the guy goes out and pitches nine innings. And he turns around and hits cleanup. Hey, I don't know. If you're going to have a guy fix a ball game, he hey, he's your shoeless Joe. <laughs> That's your shoeless Joe. Otani Yakuza <laughs> gotta be. Yeah, it gotta be how he's hey, hey, hey man. I just I don't know. I don't know. You're a guy in a ball game who throws and pitches and hits, and you got four and a half missing out of your account. And the federal government is looking at you for points. And, and for gambling and illegal activities, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Hey, show me a missing pinky. Absolutely, man. Hey, you'll think you're like, for, you, you'll think you're a hey, greasy. You'll think you're from a scene um, from Greenwich Village. Okay? You'll think you're from a scene from that pl- from that movie with Mickey York. He took my finger. They took my thumb. <laughs> Look, they took my thumb. I don't have a thumb. <laughs> they took my thumb. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you think you're from a scene from the Pope of Greenwich Village. They took my thumb. <laughs> Look at my messed up fingers. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow, yeah. Shohei Otani's going to show up the first week of baseball in Dodger Town. He's going to be missing a thumb. <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, what, what's this one here? Hey, hey, all I can tell you is this, future. Trump don't show up at that $400 million by Monday. He'll be missing a couple thumbs. <laughs> um, hey, absolutely, man. Okay, so wait. Give me a grade on this coaching staff. Okay. Cosmo goes, Sills, what's your next move? As a matter of fact, it's on my sheet here. We got it. We got it. This coaching staff, I would say this. B. To C plus. Yeah. Yeah. Prince. Maxson. And trending up. But the only reason that you're not an A is because of the head coach. There goes Dave. Because he thinks he's got Vince Lombardi as a head coach. Staffs to C at best. No, I think the talent on defense is a C minus at best. Future goes, Sills, what has Fangio done? Nothing. He's never won a Super Bowl. Okay? He's not been – I mean, the guy Spagnuolo's got four. He's been the coordinator for four Super Bowl wins. I mean, you're you're not – get this. You're not a better coaching staff than the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers have a better coaching staff than what you have. So they beat you in coaching and in personnel so far. 49ers are a better organization right now. Um, how is a better deal maker? John Lynch is a better talent evaluator. Okay. Me personally, Nick getting fired by week six, book it. That's not a good thing, homie. Fangio's defenses have been top 10 against the pass. In eight of the last 13 years, that was put, he will fix it. 
You can't fix it with shit talent like that back there. You think you you think he's going to fix it with those guys at corner and Bradbury and 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 spare part players. You really think that? Like like Dave wants that said on this program. This comes down to personnel, my friends. Kellen Moore on his third team in three years. Why are the fans delusional now? Because fans are. They get there. They do. All right. I waited for this. This, my friends, is CBS's Top 10 moves made so far this offseason. This isn't big sales. This is not my opinion. This is CBS's top 10 moves. Here we go. Number 10. Frankie Louvu, Commanders, Linebacker. Number nine, Jonah Jackson, Rams, OG, and not for original gangsta. Number eight, Leonard Floyd. 49ers, defensive end. Number seven, Keenan Allen. Bears, wide receiver. This is CBS. Best moves made so far in the offseason. Number six, Dino Hunter, Texans, edge rusher. Number five, Derrick Henry, Ravens. Number four, Hollywood Brown, Kansas City Chiefs. Wide receiver. Number three. Legereus Sneed. Tag Chiefs. They're the world champs. Cornerback. Number two. Kurt Cousins. Atlanta Falcons. Quarterback. And number one, the number one move this offseason, according to CBS Sports.com, Justin Fields, Steelers quarterback. <laughs> Where in the hell are these so-called great eagle moves? And you guys have been telling me that the national people have been raving about your moves? Like who? Frankie LeVu, 10. Jonah Jackson, 9. Leonard Floyd, 8. Keenan Allen, 7. Hunter Texan, 6. Derrick Henry, 5. Ravens. <laughs> Hollywood Brown, Chiefs wide receiver, Lajaria Sneed, <laughs> tagging, cornerback three, Kirk Cousins, two, Falcons, and the number one move is the move the Eagles were afraid to make by bringing in Justin Jalen Hurts Fields to the Steelers. Quarterback. <laughs> Where are the Eagles? Where 
why the eagle moves. Right here. Top moves. CBS. <laughs> Ain't one eagle move on here. And you're afraid to bring in Justin Fields because you didn't want to scare Jalen. Damn, dude. Prince goes to hate is real. I didn't put this list together. Not my. <laughs> the hate is real. No, Russ. No. I, I don't know, man. I, I, You know, I just find the intel. And I just go with that. Let me see. It. <laughs> hey, that is hilarious, man. There's no eagle moves on here. What happened? Okay. That's not true. Go to the website. I'm going there right now. What do you mean that? He says right here, this guy where you can go to the website. Okay. You can go to the website. Let's see here. Top. Oh, there's another one. Top 15 moves. I didn't get the top 15. Oh, they got cousins here. Mayfield. <laughs> Chris Jones. That's a good one, too. I got it. I mean, I should have looked at that one. Top 10 moves of the offseason so far. Here. Here's the list. So this guy's saying I'm lying. I'm being silly? Oh, wait. Here. Hold on. We got to go here because you know me. I'm not. Commanders. Frankie LaVou. Same. Frankie LaVou. <laughs> Jonah Jackson. Keenan Allen at seven. You think I made this up? You think I just made that up? CBS didn't think you did anything this offseason. How you doing? I didn't say it. Don't get your panties in a bind. Big Sil, but Big Sil, stop what? CBS from saying you haven't done shit yet. So I, what? Wait a minute now. So myself and CBS Sports doesn't really think you've done anything, and I, I'm not saying you haven't. Okay. Hey, that's right. Hollywood Hogan. Every one of these guys get their little fantasies and their little butt hurt all the time when you point out something. 500 says Roseman is building a monster. Where on defense? Hey, hey, Philly 500, you're full of shit on defense. They haven't. Okay. Okay. Pair up your trash coordinator hires with trash offseason moves. Season is toast. Holy, that is an old, dude, Xander can't be as old as he is because that's an old school WIP guy right there. That's an Angelo Cataldi listener. When he talks like, this is, this is beautiful. Right here, here, look at, look at, here, here's Xander. This is a Philly guy. Hey, you pair up those, those shitty trash coordinator hires. And the trash all season moves, season's toast. Good night. I'll see you next April. <laughs> yeah. That's how you guys used to talk. Now it's how he is a magician. Or as Bill calls him, he calls him like the, the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> He's the Wizard of Oz. Scout, make your fantasies and dreams come true. Just won't deliver a Super Bowl for you. Bet we win 10 games, you wear Dean jersey for a week. I'm not going to wear a guy's jersey one that you'd have to have a jersey an extra small. And secondly, I don't wear a jersey for a guy that's that's on IR. That's not going to happen. Make it so a guy who actually plays. Okay? You might as well give me a janitor's jersey to wear. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd rather wear a janitor's jersey. Then wear the Kobe Dean's jersey. At least he shows up to work every day. 
I mean, right? The janitor at Novacare shows up every day. All right? He shows up every day to go to work and take out, you know, um, all the all the uh, Happy Meal boxes that Jordan Davis leaves behind. You know, I mean, someone's got to pick up after the big fella. So he's there. He at least shows up to work. Okay? Right? Hey, 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 Chris, then why are you here? And why do the Eagles care what I say? If there's one, get this, Chris, remember something. If I have one person watching or I have a thousand watching, the one person watching is the Eagles. No one else is watching anybody. No one's watching 500 from the Eagles. No one from the media like Dumowitz is watching 500. They're watching me. Why? I really don't even know that. I don't even know. I could have one person in here watching me. It'll be the Eagles. Or somebody from a respected radio station that I'm not at liberty to say his words because one thing I promised Big Joe and Xander, I'm not, we'll never mention the name again. It's been like Moses being taken from the tablets of Egypt. I'm supposed to erase that. Okay. Resigning the best guard in football is a terrible move. I, that wasn't my list, Chris. That was CBS's list. Defense is not premium anymore. The fans want heavy scoring, and so does Roger Goodell. You're right. Paying the quarterback has trapped the NFL. Probably so. Dean Jersey, 100% polyester. <laughs> yeah. 100% polyester, it's actually a tearaway jersey. You see, when you have a Kobe Dean jersey, always be prepared to put like a mash unit symbol on it because that means, or a yellow jersey. You're going to have to put a yellow jersey on Dean's jersey because you know why? He's got to be hurt. Okay. Okay. Right. Who cares what CBS? Who cares what CBS thinks? You guys are in here telling me the national media thinks you've done a nice job. <laughs> that Jordan Davis Happy Meals crack was pretty good. Yeah, I'm not sure he's a Happy Meal guy. I think he's more of a. I, I tell you what, King. I would have to say that he sneaks into Wawa and eats that shitty pizza that got in there. <laughs> hey man, someone needs to tell Wawa that pizza's not their forte. Stop doing it. It's your second time at it. It stinks. Okay? It stinks. Sorry, I'm confused. Is our current coaching staff worse than the previous one? PSA, take the bet. Carter Jersey. <laughs> Uh, Sills, they're watching you because you know guys on the staff. I get the sense they're watching you. If you have leaks, if they have leaks in the palace, you dropped Clint's name yesterday. Well, of course they know. Are you kidding me? Clint's my guy. He asked me for permission to wear my jersey, and I granted it to him. That happens to be a fact. I helped recruit him. I knew Tracy. I, I've had run-ins with Stoutland. Not run, bad, good ones. Shit, the side was down at UM. I know all them guys. But the difference is, those guys don't call my bosses complaining. I leave it there, because people get a little upset. Sills is the CIA. No, I'm not that sinister. Okay, attention everyone. The Eagles listen to Sills 
Really? Here, here's a guy, Chris, who doesn't even know what he's talking about. Even Angelo knows they do. Call me. Dude. All right. We're, that doesn't help me, Xander. Jacob Boss is getting calls about Sills weekly. Oh, my God. Not just from the Eagles. So if I have a half a person watching, it's the industry watching. You know why? Because they're afraid. Chris goes, yep, sure. That's why you're here, kid. Nobody calls big sales. Well, that's why some of the biggest names in sports come on, right? Merrill comes on. Sills, your relationship with Clint doesn't mean how he wants coaches talking out of turn. True. They don't let position coaches do interviews. And I think that's a right move, actually. Howie's always watching. Hey, Howie, man, that, that, that guy, you can't say anything that criticizes Mr. Gator. Oh, <laughs> Gator Roseman. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Gator Roseman. Oh no, I can't do it. Gator Roseman. How's the pizza in Florida? Not the best. No, Giovanni's is good. There's a place in Orlando that's got a good, that makes some good sauce, but the, I don't know. I've not, that's not something, you know, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Giovanni's in Orlando is pretty good. Okay, if you want to really get good pizza, I would say this from from Philly up through Philly, Baltimore, Jersey for sure. Dude, you know, hey, you know the best you want to know the best place for pizza? You're gonna think this is crazy. Mr. O one, good Florida pizza, Italian guy. All right, I'll check it out. It's New Haven. No, King, it's New Haven. I don't know why. It's New Haven. New Haven has some of the best pizza I've ever eaten. Now, there's a place in Stanford called the Colony Grill that even Portnoy says is the greatest pizza place he's ever had. I grew up on that. And I, my, we used to eat bromate it. And we used to go down. It's right down in the cove down there where I live. I, I live down near the beach. And we're the cove. A bunch of Italian people live down in that neck of the woods. It's a fisherman's area. I was raised by a fisherman fireman. Italian guy. <laughs> and we have colony pizza down there. Best I've ever had in my life. Okay. It's thin crust. The undercarriage is spectacular. Okay. Sills, any WWE wrestlers coming on? Randy Orton? Um, you know, I was, that was funny you say that. I was thinking of getting Lex, Lug Lex Luger on and also um, having Diamond Dallas come on again. I'm thinking about doing those two guys because he's got a great workout program for people that are getting older for stretching out. And so I'm thinking about getting Diamond on again. Dallas Page, we've had him on. We had Dallas Page on. And we've had The Rock on. And I don't think I've had Luger on yet. Lex Luger. Luger's a cane, for the record. Okay, Four Horsemen. Yeah, Lex Luger actually started at Penn State. Got thrown out by Joe Paterno. And then signed with Miami. And then Howard Schnellenberger threw him out. And then he became a wrestler. Okay? Seals Howie's always watching. I wish... I wish to hell he'd listen once in a while. I think he I think he's not allowed to make the moves on defense because I think that's an organizational decision. Pizza is like pizza is like sex. When it's good, it's real good. When it's bad, <laughs> what <the> hell. <laughs> it's still pizza. <laughs> hey, Sills has still 
Alshon Jeffrey's jersey. That's hilarious. No, you know what it would – if I had an Alshon Jeffries jersey, there'd be a piece missing right here in the middle of the chest. There'd be a cutout where your heart was supposed to put his heart. Hey, you know that scene in The Last of the Mohegans when that guy goes in there and pulls that heart out of that um, English officer and he just yanks the heart out? That's what the Saints did to him when he dropped that pass in New Orleans – the Saints reached in and grabbed his heart and pulled it out. And that's why the Alshon Jeffries, if you're ever going to buy an Alshon Jeffries jersey, just make sure it's got a hole in the heart because they took it from him in New Orleans. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Jordan will never order pizza. <laughs> hey, you, you should call him Quez Watkins. Jeffries, okay, that guy, he catches that pass, Wentz is gone. He catches that pass, Wentz is gone. Your history's changed. Doug's probably still here. And Foles might have won that Super Bowl last year. Think this, if Foles played in that, who would you take in a Super Bowl? Oh, my God, Xander. Who would you take in a Super Bowl? Doug Peterson, Nick Foles, or Sirianni and Hurts? With the current talent. <laughs> Xander's like, the guys that won. Come on, dumbass. <laughs> Doug and Foles, do they win that Super Bowl? Right? I'll tell you one thing. I've got to say it one more time to you guys. Dude, Nick Foles, he had a lot of Eli in him in the postseason. You get that guy to the postseason, man, that guy is a – dude, that guy is one of the greatest streak players I've ever seen. And he – dude, the two years in a row in Philly, he was stupid good. Crazy. Crazy great. You put him in a race. Hey, I'll tell you something that someone said about Mahomes, that maybe this goes into how they're going to coach Jalen Hurts this year. Okay, so someone asked, Mahomes was asked a question about why all the running. What do you have, 62 yards in the Super Bowl? He said this. I'm not going to run in a game against the Eagles in week 10. But in a Super Bowl, I'm going to RPO it. Interesting. Andy Reid and him pulled all the stops out. And during the season, they didn't. They were like, I'd rather lose a game because you know why? The regular season didn't really matter to them. They wanted, it is, I'm awake or you, right? When you have the right king to make those chess moves. Okay. And that's right too. Hogan, you heard him even on the sidelines going, I, I don't remember. What was Greenlaw's number? 53? 53 is out. Or whatever is not 54, 50, whatever it was. He's out. I think Doug would have would tell how he shut up and keep Jalen dual threat. Yeah, but that would have been a conflict with the ownership. And he'd have been fired anyway. Okay? So Mahomes was asked the question. He's like, yeah, it doesn't. You know, look, we want to be playing our best ball at the end of the year, which they were. And we want to get everybody on the same page. Remember, they went on the road this last year. Man, I'll tell you what was really crazy. If you were going to beat the Chiefs, you had to beat them last year because they're going to be better this year. And what Mahomes said, I thought maybe this is how they're going to coach Jalen. Follow me. He's like, well, I'm not going to dual threat it and run a lot. And if you look at his numbers, 
Take a look at his numbers in the postseason when it comes to rushing numbers. When he runs, he runs more at a higher clip in the postseason than he does in the regular season. And you see, you see the numbers. If I looked at him, he runs more in the postseason. You know why? He feels you have to for him to win. He basically unleashes the entire Patrick Mahomes offense on you when it matters most. During the regular season, this is incredible. They hold back their offense because they hold back their quarterback. The problem with the Eagles, they're holding the quarterback back the whole way. The whole he didn't run in the buck game. Okay? But it's not just greasy. It's not just everyone plays at a higher clip. He implements more running plays. In the postseason, they call more running plays because for them to win those games, Mahomes was like this. Hey, you know, if I get hurt, there's no more games next week. I got an entire offseason to heal. The Eagles aren't thinking like this. Okay? They're not thinking like this. They're trying to change it. They're not changing Mahomes. They're re. They're redefining him. And what they're doing is, in the process, they're still developing that quarterback. Hey, you he put, I guess what I'm saying is, he plays different in the regular season than he does in the postseason. Just in, and he calls different plays. You don't have that kind of talent at the quarterback position, nor at the coaching position. To be able to have that kind of flexibility. Dude, the more you dissect how great Mahomes is, the more the gap, I'll say this to you. Would you guys agree that the gap between the first and second best quarterback in the NFL is wider than the gap between the second and third and fourth and fifth quarterbacks in the NFL? It's wider. It's wider because of all the things that that guy, dude, Brady is nowhere near as talented as Patrick Mahomes. No way. The freaking shit he gives an organization with money, salary cap savings, holding back his, no quarterback or no player goes, well, I'm not going to play that hard. I don't think it's that hard. I don't mean to say that. Because I don't think he is saying I'm going to play not as hard. I don't believe he does that. But what I'm saying is they don't play call the same way they do in the postseason. And that's by design. Whereas organizations, in my opinion, you see the Bengal offense, you're going to see the Bengal offense in week one and the final game of the year whenever that is. Nothing's going to change. That's how good Patrick Mahomes is. It, it, he, he's really, and I'll say it like Jimmy says it, he's the best and most gifted quarterback that's ever played in the National Football League. There's nothing like him. I've never seen anything like it. Like if you were going to put him on the market, how many first rounders do you think Kansas City would get for him? Okay. How many first rounders would Mahomes command if Kansas City put him out there on the open market? For whatever reason, you 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 had to put him on the open market. How many first rounders would he command? Three first rounders? Dude, Trey Lance got three first rounders. Trey Lance went for three ones, okay, 
49ers had to give up three ones to get him from the Dolphins. Three? It'd be like six. Trey Lance went for three ones. A proven 26-year-old quarterback with three rings and three Super Bowl MVPs. I don't know. Might go for six first-rounders. Shit, the money you pay, it's worth it. I don't care what he wants. I'll make it up not paying running backs or receivers. That's what I'm talking about, the gap. Dude, there's, man, and, and get this. What, remember that thing? That Big Bill. Remember Big Bill's thing about the Eagles having the best French, the best French toast and the best cafeteria and the best owner <laughs> and, and the best trolley car service and the best parking lot and the best training facility and the Chiefs have the worst. Well, how they win? <laughs> Dude, so they have F minus is Clark Hunt, the owner of the Chiefs. He's got three titles in four years. And he's an F minus. And Jeffrey Lurie's got an A. Uh, okay. What do you mean an A? <laughs> he's, he's, he's an A. Okay. Sills, when can I get a guest on the show? I just need to get my notes together to prove you wrong. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's see here. Well, wait. M. Reyes. You know, we got a couple amateurs that want to come on the program. And, uh, you know, guest callers might be coming soon, according to, according to the boss. Okay, working on it in the back end. Well, wait a minute here. Let's see. M. Reyes and Bill Calarulo, and there's a bunch of amateurs that want to come on. So, I mean, I don't know. Do I lower the show? Okay. Do I lower the show? Hey, Barb, Big Sills doesn't beg for anything except for dinner from his wife. How you doing? <laughs> hey, hey, Crowley, if I, if we can somehow ever get it where I could get that dumbass LJ on and I could hear his stupid voice, I bet he sounds like Tom Landry, all squeaky and stuff. Wee, wee, wee. I think some of you would be disappointed in some of the voices. Seals would be quiet as a mouse if we got on. Really? <laughs> Why, because I'm as afraid as Howie and Justin Fields? Oh, no, not Justin. Even, even, even the jet man himself, Jody McDonald, said that the Eagles ran from hiring, and even CBS said it was the best move so far. The Steelers getting Justin Field, and you sign Kenny Pickett. Well, how he likes him more. No, I was afraid of Justin because he didn't want to upset Jalen, you know. Guy's got 50 million bucks in a bank. Trust me, nothing would fear me. I, Dude, if I had $50 million and I had a $250 million contract, wow. You, I mean, I, I would look like Howard Hughes somewhere. You would never know where I was. I, you could never find me. It would be, the, boats would be burned. I'd be on an island. You'd never find me. Holy cow. <laughs> Okay. Absolutely. All right. See, look at this, man. Fat boy. I choose to look like this, dude. You kidding me? Big Seals didn't have an ounce of fat on him when he played. 11%. You don't run four eights, kid, being fat and slow. See, I'm Italian, which means I'm not a white guy. How you doing? <laughs> As Jerome would say, White guys don't run that fast. Okay? Oh, no. At one time, man, I was 28 vertical. I don't. 
every Friday. You should do it, Kevin. Kevin, I really? Anytime, any place, I'll skew you. Oh, my God. It's like talking to five-year-olds. Do I want to have kindergarten session every Friday? It's, it'd be like a kindergarten session. Sit, sit down. LJ, sit down. Wait, Prince. Pick your team. Ta Prince? M. Reyes, please stop interrupting. LJ, sit down. Sit down. No, no, no. Prince, it's not your turn. <laughs> Sill's going to request a pay raise for dealing with these numbers. <laughs> hey, hey, LJ, sit the, sit down. Prince, if I have to tell you again, to stop interrupting. Look, see what he said? What did I do? What the heck? Stop interrupting, Prince. I'm going to have to get Barb. Barb, you may have to help me with these maniacs. Okay? Look, See, look at this. Look what LJ's done right now. LJ's saying like this. All you outsiders who think you're going to get on and stand in front of me, Prince, M. Reyes, Twiz, or any of these other guys, forget about it. I've been here with this fat slob since day one. And if that guy doesn't put me on first, we may have to pick it out of a hat. Okay? We may have to pick this out of a hat because there's people that have contributed to the, uh, to the kitty when it comes to the Super Chats and have been here since day one. LJ, I'm going to, I'm going to, I think seniority. Might have to play a role in this. Okay. Clip 41 goes, no, 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 Sills. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You think anybody cuts in line in Philly? Okay. When they're going to get a cheesesteak? Nobody in Philly cuts in line unless you're from Jersey. <laughs> you see, you got to remember something. Philly and New York. Jersey guys cut in line in front of Philly guys and New York guys. Always remember that. I don't know what it is with these Jersey guys. They always cut in line. They want to get in front of a Philly guy, and they want to get in front of a Baltimore too. They want to get in front of a Philly guy and a New York guy. I don't know what it is with those guys in Jersey. Hey, what are you saying? Hey, look, I like the Jersey Turnpike too, okay? Hey. I like Lombardi's too. The rest stop, I've been there. I got it. Don't tell me I don't know. Okay? Hey, I've been to a Roy's too, boss. <laughs> I've gotten a hamburger at a Roy's on the New Jersey Turnpike. Oh, don't F with big sales. I've been down there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, my God. Hilarious. Roy Rogers, baby. Anybody? See, not everybody here. When you say that, Hollywood, not everybody knows what a Roy Rogers is. Okay? See, like, when you're one of those, like, aristocrats from Northern California, they don't have Roy Rogers. They don't know what that is. They don't know that you can't pump your own gas in Jersey. I still don't get that. Okay? Hey, wait, wait a minute. Why in the world do we not able to pump our own gas in Jersey? I still don't get that. And I'll never get that. Hey, I, the guy's got white gloves on, too. And I'm like, Jesus, come on. What are you doing here, guy? <laughs> they got Jack in the box. Hey, Yale, that's not only got in the box. <laughs> Roy's chicken is good, dog. Oh, yeah, blast of the past, Roy Rogers. I don't. All right, I got to take a time out here. Don't forget, folks, March Madness. Our great friends here, Jacob Sports, and we are looking for a select 500 folks. Please. I'm actually liking that thing on Fridays now. Um, LJ's got to be at the top of the list there with that because he's the biggest pain in the ass, but some of you guys are pretty close to that too there. Believe me, I could pick straws on who the biggest jackass is, but we're good. Because I'm a jackass. But as I digress, loyal viewers and subscribers, 
We'd like you to sign up here, please, with our good friends at Underdog Fantasy. It's a great way to play along. What game am I watching right now on CBS? I got the games all on. I got the TVs working here. I do like the tournament. Dude, I really don't know who they are, but I love betting. And this gives you an opportunity. Ten bucks, they match it, okay? They will match your bet. So all the way up into 100 bucks, you put a C note in, they'll give you a C note. Match it all the way through that. You play throughout the tournament for March Madness. Now, here's the deal. Promo code W-I-N. That's W-I-N. Gives you an opportunity to play along with the tournament. We'll reset. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Mike Little was a union construction worker who was badly, badly injured when he suffered a horrific fall because of someone's negligence. His life would change forever. It was just a real downward spiral with everything. Everything you do, and you're sitting home by yourself all day. Have no, you know, you can't go out because you can't drive, you can't walk well. It was just a horrible situation. Call Brian Fritz at the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm at 215-548-2222. E-A-G-L-E-S Eagles J.J. McCarthy to the Giants or the Vikings Big sales, final hour, power hour Please hit the like button here I want to throw this at you guys By the way, thank you guys We're up to like 100 likes I'd like to get a couple more by the end of the program So please, if you could indulge me Hit a couple more of them power likes for me. I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm humble to you. Um, I'll say this to you here, man. I'll get to Otani. I want to reset here. But J.J. McCarthy, how I, I, I see Johnny Manziel just a better dude. Okay? I, I don't see it. Where was he anywhere? Re- hey, Stetson Bennett looked better at Georgia. Okay? Didn't he? Didn't Stetson Bennett look better at Georgia than what J.J. McCarthy did? <laughs> look at Q. Only in a Philly way. Sills being humble? Okay, maybe that. Hey, okay, Cosmo, you got me. Humble, being humble is not. My wife hates that. Oh, my God. Dude. 
Hey, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on. Let me circle this. Just so you know, my ha- my wife hates braggers. She hates egomaniacs. She hates obnoxious people. And I call her the dumbest person on the planet because she married that guy. <laughs> she goes like this, you know, she goes, you are dumb. I go, no, you're dumber because you married the dumbest guy. She's like, kudos. The only time in your life you ever got me. No, second. Uh, uh, second okay second time she hates braggers whoa dude my my daughter here's what my daughter will say i'll forget what i'm talking about and my daughter will do this i'll go damn what was i saying she goes dad it was probably something about you and you talking about yourself (laughs) so i just shut up yeah, my wife, she hates that shit, man. Oh, she hates anybody with a massive ego. And she has one. She doesn't even know it. But most people with an ego don't know it. At least I know my faults. Right, Xander? <laughs> hey, real quick before I get back to JJ, you see that picture of me and Dick Enberg? How many, th- this is where we're going to know the age difference with some of you. How many people in here, help me out, know who Dick Enberg is? You guys know who Dick Emberg is? Dick Emberg is one of my close friends and helped me in broadcasting. Do you know who Dick Emberg is? And if you go over to my Twitter page, there's a pit. Here, I'll show it to you here so you guys don't have to go over there. But I would ask you to, if you don't follow along, please do. There's not a chance in hell. That Xander knows who uh, Dick Emberg is. Um, let me see here. Let's see. I got. I put a picture of me and him up. Here it is. There's Big Sills and Dick Emberg. You guys know who that guy is? Okay. He used to call the NCAA games. Was phenomenal doing it too. And when I first got into broadcasting, Rune Arledge and Jim McKay helped me get into broadcasting. And those three guys were really instrumental in helping. No, he died a couple years ago, Yale, of a heart attack. But he called UCLA games and he was the voice of the UCLA Bruins during their dynasty. He called the Angels and his last job was with the Padres. He was the voice of the Padres. And so, um, yeah, and so I got a chance when I moved to 1090 to meet Dick Emberg even more so. I ha- I knew him on the East Coast, but we reunited when he was with the Padres. And so I met up with him all the time. We used to have lunch. Really a great guy. Hey, Q goes, Sills, cut me some slack. I'm 26. Fantastic. I'm glad you're 26 watching the show. Thank you, brother. It means a lot. Because most most old farts like me, you're the kind. Watch it, hey Q, you're the kind of guy I'm attracting. <laughs> Pat Summerall was a was a friend. He played with my uncle. Twiz, you clearly don't like Dan, so you are here to troll Dan. People who defend Dan, go James, go get Twiz. Absolutely, Twiz likes cheerleaders, but I actually like Twiz. It's okay if he trolls me. I troll his ass too. You know how he controlled Twiz? Watch this. Twiz, I love Twiz. I'm with him. Twiz, I'm with you, brother. You know how you trolled Twiz? Here, I'm going to do my very first troll job with Twiz. You ready? Hey, Twiz, Earth sucks. <laughs> uh, hey, Twiz, Earth sucks. <laughs> uh, that ass bag will say anything to troll me when it comes. Hey, hurt sucks. Stop it. Okay. 
A track goes, Sills, you're high. I'm high on life, Junior. Always remember that. I'm happy with what I do. Why aren't you? I'm happy being able to talk to you on a day to day basis. It's a privilege. You understand that, right? It's not a right of mine to talk to you. It's a privilege to talk to you. Wentz, watch. That's another one. Wentz is better than Hurts. Wentz is way more accomplished than Hurts will ever be, as, as Xander knows, ever. <laughs> oh, my God. Too good. Got to dub it, man. Yeah, well, Chuck, not for long. Believe me. These strawberries keep going up. Big Seals' ass is going to be in Isle Morata real soon. <laughs> Jimmy's got a house pegged out for me already, and it's got a marina, and I'm there. You know, hey, you watch. Big Seals is going to be – I would say this. Within the next six months, Big Seals is going to have a better tan, and I'll be on the beach doing my show. I don't. And Xander will be sitting down there next to me, and he'll have a – He'll have a fishing pole in his hand. How you doing? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Get this. State income tax. State, no state sales tax. You know what I'm doing. No way, man. It, okay. And Sanders like, I'm out of here, too. <laughs> Dude, big sales gun. I'm going to Florida. I'm not going to lie. California's got great views. Horrible Wi-Fi. Everything's worth a trillion dollars, and I live in the highest. Do you know that I live in the highest place for rents, mortgages, and owning a home in America? Of course I do. <laughs> My aunt would go, of course you do. Like, why couldn't I live in North Dakota? We're like a thousand bucks. You can live off it for two years. Oh, come home. Hey, Kevin, I want to. Kevin, I love the Northeast. I, I love the Northeast, and I love Florida. You lose hair every time. <laughs> I, hey, Embraer I'm going bald every time you talk shit on. Hey, Sills, I'm putting a Maloika on you. This is just what this is going to do here, okay? Okay? This is what I'm going to do to you here, all right? Every time you talk shit on that guy, you're going to lose a strand of hair. <laughs> Kevin goes, I'm in Tampa. Oh, you must have loved Ian Beckles yesterday. I got a call from their program director, John Mamola. And he's like, you know, I was, I've been, let me see. I've been exiled from Tampa, the highest rated morning show in the history of Tampa radio for sports. Because Bubba the Love Sponge had higher ratings than me. But Big Seals did 10 shares on a daily basis, monthly basis, three month basis, yearly basis. We did 10 shares, 2554 across the board. Incredible show. But you can't do that show today. Can I say this to you guys? My show was kind of like all in the family. <laughs> hey, it's, you could never put a, hey, Yale. You could never put All in the Family on TV today. You can't put this show on radio today. But you know, when I check out my LinkedIn, I see Beasley checks out the show. I see iHeart, Odyssey, Cumulus, all these companies, they watch the show. Because hey, I'm giving them ideas. Hey, Sills, is Howie hoping the offense will cover up how the D may perform bad or even worse than 23 or am I not sold on Vic Eagles destroyed him in 22 um I get it 34 I would say this yes that's why the signing of Barkley if you really hey let's peel back the onion here why do you think they signed Barkley why do you think they signed Barkley Why do you think they signed him? 
Barkley's the complete back. No. Oh, yes. Yes. Keep the defense off the field. Kyle, that's good enough. Watch this. Well, you're right. If you can go on those 11, 12 play drives and play good special teams and you're willing to give up some yards on defense and you're comfortable with that, control and contain, remember, that's his mentality. His mentality is control and contain. Vic Fangio, he's not going to blitz a lot. You're not going to see a higher volume of that. Okay? Xander's like, how many superstars does a $55 million quarterback need? Build the defense. I get it. But this is the move they've made. This is what they're doing. This is their philosophy. Do I agree with it? No. But this is what they're doing with it. And this is what they have to succeed with. They have to. If Barkley gets hurt, your defense will be worse. The defense is relying on Barkley's health, not the offense. Does this make sense? Does this make sense to you? Okay. If he gets hurt, you're finished, not the quarterback. Because the quarterback couldn't save you last year. And he won't save you this year. Barkley, like McCaffrey. That's why Jalen Hurts is Brock Purdy. Hurts is not going to save you. Barkley, McCaffrey. It's the same setup for both teams. Now, again... Soul's going like this. Address the defense. I get it. I completely get it. But they're not. We're talking about what they've done and what they're doing. And every one of those moves that they've made on defense has been a low-quality move. Or, wait a minute, has been a mid-range move to lower quality move they haven't made a premium move on defense when it comes to bringing personnel in there's not one guy except for maybe huff listen i'll say this to you about bryce huff he was on a lot of teams list and there were a lot of people interested in him but the problem with that move was you're not stout playing the run you're not good at covering and you bring a guy in to add to that problem Like, Huff adds to that problem. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't help the problem. He adds to it. So where did you get the advantage by adding him? Think about that, Yale, for a minute. Huff adds to the Eagles' problems more so than helps them. Reddick had 12 sacks last year. That didn't mean anything. So if he gets 12 sacks and they can't cover and they can't stop the run, You're in the same dilemma you were a year ago. Where have you improved? You feel me? What, because Vic is a better play-calling defensive coordinator than um, Sean Desai was? Well, didn't Sean Desai and Brian Johnson school the offensive-minded head coach in Miami and Vic Fangio this past year, didn't they beat the brakes off him at the link? Boy, it didn't seem to be a problem for Brian Johnson and Sean Desai against the Dolphins. That was one of the easier games for the Eagles last year. Am I right when I say that? They beat the brakes off them. Sean Desai didn't look too bad then, did he? They stopped that high-powered offense. And they scored on that Vic Fangio defense, did they not? I'm like, okay. I mean, lesser coordinators beat the brakes off of Vic last year. And a pretty good play-calling head coach. They're counting on Carter and Davis. Agreed? Can Carter play on the outside in the 34th? Well, it seems they're going to put him out there. 
I think he's quick enough, but he's going to have to set the edge and be in really great shape. And I think he's going to have to lose a little weight to play out there. Okay. I think he's going to have to. Waddle was hurt, which didn't help to him. Oh, okay. But the game wasn't ever close. So Waddle made that much of a difference that him being out, they had no chance. You still had Tyree Kill in that game. He was a complete non-factor. I was checking out Chop Robinson's highlights. He looks like Huff. Yeah, but I think he can play the run. That's what Manny Diaz says. Manny Diaz, I'll tell you one thing, Yale. Would you like to have Joey Porter? In the second, what was Joey Porter, a second rounder? Would you like to have Joey Porter from last year's draft? He was in the second round. Would you have taken him or would you have taken Nolan Smith? Them Penn State guys can play. They don't want to get better on defense. They want to stay the same. They want to outscore you on offense. I think that's the thought. Well, you got to have a lot of health and luck there. Okay. All right. Um, I got. I got to. I got one. One more time. One more time on that. Hey, hey, future of men. <laughs> Thank you. Seals. I couldn't stop laughing. Enjoyed it. Hey, future. That's what I try to do every day. A little bit of fun. A little bit of ball twisting. And you know, nothing serious. Or what would Bill say? Just don't throw shit out to throw shit out. Well, guess what? I like to entertain. I'm just happy to have CJ back. That's a good move. Sometimes you just need someone to get out and make a damn play. Correct. And, the, and flip the field opportunistic. Steve, that's exactly the MO of, of Gardner Johnson. You're right. I'll, I'll take a – hey, Steve. I'll take a playmaker over a guy who's fundamentally sound that doesn't make plays. Yes, that is clearly Gardner Johnson. You know, when you watch him in his run fits, you do this. I don't know. When you watch him, sometimes in pass coverage, you're like, damn, this guy could get beat. But like that guy digs with the Cowboys, right? He's kind of like that guy with the Cowboys but they're always around the ball in big plays. You know what I mean? Always. <laughs> M. Reyes goes, sports can y'all move to Vegas so I can crash the show. Reyes, I love living in Vegas. Hey, 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 Reyes, tell these folks, you could pay 450 bucks at a Piggly Wiggly for eggs at any moment. When you go to the Piggly Wiggly, am I right? Hey, M. Reyes, when you go to Vegas, you could pay $450 for 12 dozen eggs. <laughs> right? Hey, M. Reyes, right? You ever gone into the Piggly Wiggly and you're $450 lighter? And the only thing you have in your hand is eggs. <laughs> And your old lady sent you to the Piggly Wiggly to try to pick up some milk and some other stuff. And you walk out of there going, I only have a dozen eggs and I'm light in the pocket 450. <laughs> I can only get a whole lot more than eggs for that. No, no, no. M. Reyes, you put it in the slot machines. You're sitting there at the slot machines in the Piggly Wiggly. You drop 450 and you have to make sure you have enough money for eggs. And you walk out and you walk home and you're like, I've seen my wife do this. What are we eating? Peanut butter and jelly. What the hell happened to dinner? I bet it. <laughs> oh, dude, that's the shitty thing about living in Vegas, man. You go to a Piggly Wiggly, man, you can lose your dinner meal. <laughs> hey, you, you, hey, not good, man. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, I can't tell you how many times we walk in. To like a grocery store. And by the way, you can't get in front of a slot machine at these Piggly Wigglies because you know why? Off the strip, they're, they're, hey, 
Hey, right, M. Ray. Everyone knows who lives in Vegas. You don't bet on the strip because they don't build those castles for free. You you lose. It's seventy percent of the time, seventy five percent of the time, you're going to lose. There's no chance of you walking out unless you get one in a hundred. But off it, it's set at about sixty six or sixty five percent failure rate. So the better you win more, I've won more money in a Piggly Wiggly than I did at a casino. I've won three grand before, four grand before at a Piggly Wiggly than I have at a Golden Nugget or such. It's true. M. Reyes will tell you. I'm still trying to get used to the new NFL. These guys tackle like statues. It's a new rule for the defense. Did you see that they're taking away death row? They're taking away the hip tackle. My daughter does that in rugby. It's such a great tackle. And for them to take that away like that is ridiculous. They do not want defensive football players making plays any longer. Like, I don't know if Reggie White can play in today's NFL. I really don't. I, I, I surely don't think LT could. I just don't. I, I, I Because the rule changes. Um. Off the strip is where it's at for sure. Otherwise, Fremont, Fremont's good. Okay. Hey, hey, M. Reyes, what's that strip club down there across from the Nugget? I lived there for five years. I loved it. The strip is not worth it if you want to actually win. Absolutely true. He's dead on. He, he's dead on. It's a great uh, – Fremont is really great. And they've cleaned that thing up down there too a little bit. Really great place. Vegas sucks and has since the 80s. Uh, well, you know, they because they've changed the casinos out. They don't have the sands and they don't have the stardust down there anymore. They got all these like for kids and they make it for kids now. So it's more kid friendly. Um, I'm a Christian son of, okay. 49ers signing this year. We're all guys with not an injury history. The Eagles did the opposite. It's a great take. That's a great take, and you're right. Uh, <laughs> no comment, M. Reyes. I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, man. All right, hey, let me let me get back to one thing we opened the show with. Gambling. Oh, since we're talking about it now. The NFL is going to use the Shohei Otani thing to their advantage to scare players. See what can happen to you. When in the end, the Super Bowl was just played in Las Vegas. The NFL teams up with DraftKings. And I, by the way, I'm not saying it's wrong. But the NFL doesn't want you, the player, to team up and be part of the gambling scene. Why? Don't you think it's more likely for the organization to cheat than a player. They're the ones with all the information. They're the ones that have all the inside information on how an organization and how a coach thinks, the game plan, all of that. The player doesn't. He's given a playbook on Wednesday. They already know what they're going to do. So why is it so that the organization can, because they own the team, it's okay for them to bet? You know, Major League Baseball wants to put a sports book at Wrigley Field. Do you know that? They want to put a sports book at Wrigley Field. Pretty soon at the link, you're going to have a sports book to do in-game prop bets. I mean, this is where they're going. Okay, have you seen the underground city in Vegas? I have not yet. Nope, I haven't. I I have not. I heard it's dope. A lot of people there. I I know people at the place I stay. I stay at the MGM. I I have for um, like twenty years. Those people take care of me over there. Scott Sabilla takes care of me at the MGM Grand. He now runs MGM Resorts. Gee, I just remembered that. But every time I go to Vegas, it gives me a free room. It's pretty cool, actually. I think they own the winds. I think they own uh, the wind now, too. 
But Scott Sibilla, who's been there for like ever, is the uh, director of, I think, MGM Resorts. And when I, I, I met him when I played in the Arena League and we would play at the MGM Grand. Pretty cool, huh? I played my football, indoor football at the MGM. And then the next day, Tyson would fight Peter McNeely. <laughs> hey, I've had a really weird life. Sills, you played at the MGM? Yeah, like Wayne Newton. <laughs> like Wayne Newton. Absolutely. Okay. I want to bring this back. So you guys would be against the Eagles looking at Odell Beckham and bringing him in on a league minimum. $1.2 million deal. Adelson was a great guy. I really liked Adelson. I really did. His wife now runs um, the operation Adelson. Yeah, that's crazy you know that name because not a lot of people, Yale, know that. Or, uh, yeah, well, Steve Wynn's still alive, but Adelson isn't. The wife is. Oh, dude, he he was gonna he was gonna buy the Raiders from Mark Davis, and he's really the reason the Raiders moved there because he got that five hundred million dollars for him. And you know who was part? Hey, Yale, you know who was part of that? This is way behind the scenes. Have you guys ever heard of Napoleon McCallum? Have you guys heard of Napoleon McCallum? Do you know who he is? Napoleon. Nicolum, have you ever heard of him? Okay. He played at Navy. He played with the Raiders. He is in that organization, and he was the instrumental piece in the Raiders moving to Vegas and making that whole thing happen with uh, City Hall, with Carolyn Goodman, who has been on this program numerous times, and she's a dear friend, and the old man, too who was also in casino, he he was, uh, what's his name's attorney, but he was a former mayor, and those people kind of brought the Raiders. Napoleon Kaufman. Sorry, Taylor, thank you. Yes, yes. Napoleon Dynamite. That's funny. Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> uh, yeah. We don't need another good wide receiver that can't be found in the offense. So, John, why don't you just put a name there then? Because you go into a game 10 on 11 because you never use that position. Yeah, that's it, Paul. He he, he played at the Naval Academy. And I've been to a bunch of Army-Navy games with him. Great guy. Absolutely great guy. Absolutely. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, the guy with the Raiders, Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a problem bringing him in, man. Okay, so the Dolphins are going to have three wideouts, and one of them is going to be Beckham. What's wrong with the Eagles have? Hey, I, I could see the Cowboys signing him. I could. I could see the Dallas Cowboys signing him to that contract. Absolutely. I mean, Kellen Moore, look, and like, and like, I think either Prince or LJ said, the number three wide receiver is going to be Barkley anyway because you got to figure out how to get him in to the lineup. You do. All right. couple things in the draft. And I'm 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 saying this with the draft and with how they're looking. I saw Caleb Williams on an interview yesterday and also this morning. And people are saying if Shador Sanders was in the draft this year, who would you take and who has more of an upside as an NFL quarterback, Shador Sanders or Caleb Williams? Who would you take? And I said to him, Shador wasn't on a very good football team last year. 
Okay. Caleb was. Okay. Caleb was. But if he was in the draft right now, who would you take? Jaden Daniels, Shador Sanders, or would you take Caleb? I would probably take Sanders. He's bigger. He's been in a home that understands success. He's been around his dad. His dad, Brady helps him. Brady schools him. Okay? He does. Is Sanders really that good? Says ABC. I think so. My only problem that I had with him was that he was holding on to the football just a little bit too long. LJ, I saw that. The tush push stays. But the tush push is not going to be a factor this year. Kelsey's the tush push. It's not Hurts. I'm not saying they won't be successful. But Cam Jurgens is not Jason Kelsey. And I agree that that thing is going to be no longer a major part of the offense. I do not believe that. Okay? When Kelsey had went 26 to 28 times, they had success with the with the fourth and one. And that translated over to Hertz. I just don't see that continuing. And I do think it's – we're going to find – hey, that's one thing. We're clearly going to find out. Okay? We're clearly going to find out. Jurgens is a strong dude who can run. Yeah, but again, I don't think it's got anything to do with that. I think it's got to do with quickness and what – did you hear what um, Herm Edwards said yesterday? Herm Edwards said one of the reasons why he thought that tush push was successful was because of the reach and the arm reach that he had as a football player. Okay. It, it 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 it's that he, his reach. This guy's got like a boxer's reach. Okay. If it's Sills chat, it's all jokes. It's all good, man. I like people joking, having a good time. Go to San Francisco and say tush push. <laughs> LJ, I'm gonna take a break on that one. <laughs> and and this, this is the same guy here, Xander, who wants to be on Friday. And he's setting me up with this thing here. Look at this here. Go to San Francisco, Tush Push means a whole different thing out there. And that's the guy who wants to come on Friday. And you wonder why places call and call call me out. It's because of people like him. Oh, man. Look, he's got a microphone. He's ready to go. This guy's like, hey. <laughs> He's ready to go. LJ, I don't know. They, You know what, LJ? That may be a knock against you. I don't know. I think Twiz has just moved up. And I got to say, Twiz has moved up. Prince has moved up. Yale's up there. Barb is clearly up there. Barb may be my referee. Uh, Xander's the traffic cop. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. By the way, don't forget, NCAA March Madness is going on right now. I think Barkley does a great job. He didn't his first time through, but he's doing a great job now, him and Kenny. March Madness, again, we're teaming up with our friends at Underdog Fantasy. Jacob Sports is looking for a select 500 folks and some of our great viewers and subscribers. We thank you, and we can't thank you enough. The minimum is 10 bucks. They'll match it. 10, 20, 30, all the way up to a C note, hundred dollars. They will match that number. Okay. This is all during the March Madness tournament. Join now, please. The link is at the top of the chat. Just click it. Put 10 bucks in. They give you 10. You're not, you, you can't lose. Okay. You just can't lose. Uh, remember now, here's the most important thing. You have to use the promo code WIN. W-I-N. That's W-I-N. Hit the like button. 
Keep it here, National Football Show. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Mike Little was a union construction worker who was badly, badly injured when he suffered a horrific fall because of someone's negligence. His life would change forever. It was just a real downward spiral of everything. Everything you do, and you're sitting home by yourself all day. Have no, you know, you can't go out because you can't drive, you can't walk well. It was just a horrible situation. Call Brian Fritz at the Fritz & Beyond Cooley Law Firm at 215-548-2222. E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles. Hey, this wasn't too heavy for you guys, was it? Holy cow, I didn't look at this. The back of it here. Check it out. Here's Big Sills at Lambo. My aunt took, hey, Betty, you took this picture. My aunt took this picture. I haven't seen this picture in a hundred years. Yep. Oh, wait, right, by the way, there's Ron Heller, number 73. He's a former Eagle. Right? That's at Lambeau. Was this too heavy? All right. I don't, I don't, I don't want it to be. But this is heavy here. Okay, check it out. So let me show you what these guys do here at Jacob to me. And James, <laughs> this is what these guys at Jacob do to me. Xander, Joe Kraus. Okay, you want me to tell you what they do to me? You too, James. So they just post this. Kellen Moore is going around looking for jobs that he knows he can. The coaches are in trouble. And you think that relationship between <laughs> will be healthy if he gets out to a bumpy start. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how dare you quote me? <laughs> yeah. How dare you quote me like that in a clip? How dare you? Kellen Moore is going. This is on their website, by the way, Jacob Sports. 
with a K. Keller Moore is going around looking for jobs that he knows the coaches are in trouble. And you think that relationship between <laughs> will be healthy if he gets out to a bumpy start. Hey, James, let me just hook you up on something here, son. The other day, you wouldn't post Merrill saying they wouldn't bring in Justin Fields because they were a little nervous and rattling in the cage. But old James and Xander, they think that's not going to have oh, – the people are like, I hate this guy. This guy's the worst. Here, let me get here, – here's some of the takes so far. Um, okay. Negative in March. This is why Philly media is perceived as it is because of clowns like this. They need nothing but make the most out of where they ended last season. You are the number one aggravator of all times. I would have stopped on following you, but I can't. <laughs> ah, okay. So like my old lady, this guy's miserable. Smoke some weed. You really just create a fake scenario between Sirianni and Kellen Moore. Thanks, James. <laughs> ah, I think I speak for everyone when I say, stop it. Stop posting this guy. Jacob, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> they know what they're doing. <laughs> Somebody needs to sue this guy. Because I say Nick and Sirianni aren't going to be buddy-buddy. Huh. I know who I know who sent that. Mr. Gator. <laughs> I think Mr. Gator sent that. Yes, sir, boy. Well. Oh yeah, no, that situation is going to be really wonder, wonderful to watch. Okay. LJ slobbed up the tone for a wrench. I'm glad you support Tone. All good, man. We all do. Are you under some sort of notion that we all don't here? We love him. Tremendous guy. Hard worker. Wonderful. You don't want to be in our business? <laughs> We've all been canned. <laughs> We've all been canned, no matter how good you are. Jacob knows that, knows what they're doing. Breaking necks, cashing checks. <laughs> Ah, yeah, that, well, they got some Italian in them, so I understand what they're doing, Junior. Okay, I do. All right, folks, you guys were great. March Madness, please do me a favor, Jacob Sports. We're looking for 500 folks again. We're getting there with your help. We're getting there, and we're partnering up with Underdog Fantasy. The minimum is 10 bucks. Please do me a favor. <laughs> Join, it's right there at the top, too, of the chat. And you guys, again, 10 bucks, 100 bucks. They'll match it all the way up to 100. Use the promo code W-I-N. That's W-I-N. Joe, Xander, James, thank you very much. Two to six tomorrow, and we shall see you on the flip side.